Howdy y'all and welcome to something that's been really hotly requested, a box opening of Outlaws of Thunder Junction Play Boosters. Here's what this looks like and indeed it is time to saddle up for a wild ride. The full set was just revealed so let's crack open all these packs. I'm going to be taking my time, I'm going to be opening up packs and telling stories. Who knows how long this video could go? Sometimes they go for an hour, sometimes they go for two hours, or even three hours in some cases. We're gonna find out together. All right, here we go. First of all, you can scan here to discover the coolest card. So I guess if you wanna see uh, all the special treatments, you can pull out your phone right now and scan this guy. Well, what I really love though is on the back of this is all the draft archetypes for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I've got an article and I've got a video actually that'll be going up covering the draft archetypes next week, but here's a little sneak peek at them. I love that we do this because you can put it in the center of the table as you um, as you draft and just everyone can kind of look at it. So it's great when you're cracking open a box. But here we are, all these fresh packs of Outlaws of Thunder Junction Play Boosters. Let's crack them open and get started. I'm gonna just put this over here. A little off the side, Oko action. And Let's get started. All right, first pack. This is the first pack, by the way, I've ever opened about Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I've never opened one before. So let's see what we get. Hopefully we get some good stuff. All right, first up we got this Iron Fist Pulverizer. Uh, now this is the, the second spell thing. Second spell, a little easier to set up in this set because of um, the plot mechanic. So that's kind of nice here. Five mana, four, five reach. A secret reacher, for sure. Sometimes we uh, give reach to things in red, and uh, some people call this secret reach. You might get tricked by this one. Don't get tricked in a combat. It's got reach. Giant beaver. Okay, so for our first saddle card, let's talk a bit about saddle. So we knew we wanted mounts. We knew we wanted mounts coming into Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It made so much sense for the set, and so a ton of mechanics were tried over and over and over again mechanics were, were tried that would kind of be like, hey, you're coming with a mount or you're riding a mount or whatever. And ultimately what you know the lead designer Dave Humphreys found and the, the you know vision design team found ultimately was just that vehicles kind of got the direction right. You can tap creatures to saddle things and that's how in magic you communicate that something's getting used. It also um, chunks information so it takes what you already know about crewing vehicles and just puts it into a new type. So you don't have to learn a whole new thing, it just has some small tweaks. So this is only as a sorcery, which is worth noting, right? You can't saddle on your opponent's turn, although you won't really want to their stuff, do stuff on, on your turn. Um, and the creature can still just attack as normal. It's, this is just a four mana, four, four vigilance. And you can just ignore the rest of this text if you want to. But if you uh, saddle it up, it gets even stronger. So it's kind of a, a way that just improves your creatures that are already on instead of vehicles that you have to turn on in the first place. Now, because these are always on, they're not as like binary as vehicles. Vehicles are often very strong, but if, they, if you're not turned on, they don't do anything. With a uh, saddle, the... Toppins are usually a little bit weaker because the creature is already doing a base thing, um, which is pretty exciting. So yeah, that's kind of the history of the saddle mechanic. And here's a giant beaver, which you can indeed saddle on up and ride right into town. Okay, deserts also back. We were not gonna do a set like this with this theming not based on deserts or not with deserts around. We did this of course in Amonkhet, but it is back here. There's a handful of desert cards and like, you know, caves in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It's just a little touch, a tiny little thing you get with the with the set. Oh, here's another Deserts Mattered card, Failed Fording. Yep, it kind of shows up all around the place. Outlaw Medic, just a simple life linker that draws you a card. I love these creatures that just trade off uh, or, you know, can cycle away early, right? You put this thing down, you block their creature, you gain a life, you can block and draw a card, all the better. Skullduggery, here is a reprint, so a great name for this set. Great to have it in here for this uh, Frontier Fantasy vibe. Sterling Keykeeper, so this taps, no taps non-mounts. You might wonder why it taps non-mounts. Well, simply, it feels so bad to have to play against this thing when you've got creatures and mounts. Because if you tap your creatures to mount the mounts, then your opponent can just tap it in response. So this both does two things. It helps make sure that you don't end up in this weird pickle where you're not sure if you go, you know, you go to go to the beginning of combat step and it's and it's like, or I guess not being a combat combat, but yeah, in your main phase you activate this and there's like a little mini game, but if you should tap something or not, whatever. Um, but also it helps give a little bit of power to mounts by letting this thing not tap it. So you can take care of all the all the non-mounts, but the mounts um, are good at good at getting through. 
All right, here is at knife point, so outlaws. So outlaws are a new batch. So we started batches in Dominaria. Um, and then uh, we brought them back with party and we did, uh, what other ones did, did we do? We did uh, party and we did, of course, <laughs> um, there's decorated on that one, uh, one uncard. And yeah, we invested in them a couple other places. I remember we invested, uh, modified, of course. I remember we investigated it in um, uh, or Eldraine as well as instance enchantments and fairies, I think. Or no, artifacts, enchantments, and fairies. Anyway, the moral of the story is batching is back. And what this does is it takes a bunch of disparate things and batches them under one term, one name. So here, this cares about assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks. That's what outlaws are. There was a lot of debate over which types should make this list. And kind of all the work we did was making sure that they have a good spread of colors. So even white could get in on the outlaw fun with stuff like warlocks. There aren't a lot of white rogues, but yeah, warlocks, yeah, we can make, make that happen. Um, so yeah, there's a, you know, there's a little, kind of be able, they're spread across all colors and there's a lot of fun backwards compatibility here too, right? We did talk about just having outlaw as a creature type, but it's really fun to be able to bring old cards into magic. So whenever we make a new mechanic, we're always thinking, oh, how would this be backwards compatible with magic? This also features committing a crime. It does not have reminder text on it, but um, when the team came up with this, they were just pretty chuffed, <laughs> quite happy. S saying that you were able to commit crimes is just so fun, and yeah, targeting anything is a crime. So there's no random text on this card, we'll see it on later cards, but if you target your opponent, their graveyard, um, or basically anything they have, that is committing a crime. So um, whenever you kill their creature, for example, you commit a crime and make a mercenary token. Third thing to talk about on this card, wow, a lot, what a card to talk about the whole set with, at knife point here. Um, yeah, we made up these mercenary tokens that are just kind of like, hey, you're recruiting your band of mercenaries. They both turn on your outlaw stuff because they are outlaws themselves, so that's nice. And they also just help you attack. This format is a little on the aggressive side, or can be anyway, and uh, helping you punch through, get an extra damage. Um, a lot of that work is done by mercenaries, making sure that the board doesn't really, really stall up. So yeah, they're quite good. And show you kind of recruiting mercenaries. That was a lot about at knife point. Nimble Brigand, there's your crime reminder text. So this is a yeah, scroll thief that can always get in if you've committed a crime. Very nice. Fleeting Reflection, this is just a kind of a do everything little trick here. You can give something hexproof, it untaps it, it becomes a copy. We're always trying to find ways to make blue combat tricks or blue you know, response tricks, cards you'll actually put it in your deck. Here's one that you might actually play with. You, know, you can copy something at instant speed and crush people with it. Ooh, not a bad place to start. These lands are back, these fast lands. Great to have these back in this set. Um, this one, you force have to call it Bloomin' Marsh, because that's just the vibes feel right there. And um, yeah, you know, just these are popular lands. Excited to have them back in standard, the enemy ones. And you'll see plenty of play there. Ooh, and here's our bonus sheet card. So this whole bonus sheet is all crimes. So everything on this bonus sheet can commit a crime, some more directly than others. We'll see all kinds of variety as we go along here. But I love bonus sheets. They just add such replayability to the draft format. And they, it's always fun to see like what blast from the past return. Murder though, perfect one to start on. It's just just a true crime, murder. Um, all of them have this flavor text too that are written like headlines. So yeah, I'll actually bring this a little closer so you can see what one looks like in person. They're pretty cool looking. I love these wanted poster headline kind of vibes. They're, they're nice. Uh, right, the wanted posters we'll probably see, we'll hopefully see if we open up well enough later. Um, ooh, a foil rare to start with, not too shabby. So this is the key to the vault. I remember playing this card in limited. I drafted this a couple times in our play test. It was pretty pretty fun. But I expect this will see plenty of um, commander play, right? You just get to, to uh, um, cast some free spells every turn. What's not to love? Or cast one, one free spell anyway. Uh, we got a planes. Shout out for planes. And then just this uh, card at the end, add on both sides. Okay, very cool. Let's move on to pack. Number two, through our first pack of Thunder Junction, I've explained the mechanics, so that's good at least. All right, we got Ankle Biter. There is a snake in my boot indeed. Love just a simple one-one death touch. I think these cards are often underrated and limited. It, take, it took a while for people to catch onto these, but um, you uh, you know just being able to trade with anything for one mana is huge. Um, you just put this thing down, you delay an early attack, you deal with a later attack. It's it's you know seldom a totally dead draw. These are really good. I'm gonna move, this box being in view is like kind of weird. I don't know, you, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna move it just a little out of view here. I wanted to keep all the packs up on stage. I promise I'm not like 
do anything weird with the packs over here, although some people in the comments will surely um, say I'm stacking the packs or whatever, but it just looks kind of weird in the corner of the camera. Okay, Raven of Fell Omens, another crime committing card. Plenty of limited archetypes want you to care about care about crimes, so there's a card, card for that. The Spring Splasher, yeah, I love these kind of ways to find aggressive blue cards, so this is um, a nice one to help make sure you can get in by shrinking their, their blocker down. That's nice. It's also a frog beast, so what's not to love there? All right, so here's our first plot card. So plots of mechanic, we've kind of circled the drain on the space with many other mechanics before, or things we've tried internally, uh, at least. You saw something kind of like it with Fortel, but the way that plot works is you pay mana and you exile the card, and then on a later turn, you can play it without paying its mana cost. So you pay four mana now, and the next turn you can just plop it down. This is a card you will usually want to play the next turn right away because it's a four or five creature, so you know don't even want to hold off on that. But um, you, yeah, there are some cards you definitely want to hold for like the right moment. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that's cool. Uh, one thing is we got a lot of notes. We kept getting consistent notes in play testing, or not consistent, but every now and then, people being like, oh, it's a bummer my plots are face up. Why do my plots have to be face up? And the reason why is because if you put it face down, it'd be hard to reveal, they wouldn't know what the mana cost is, they'd have to just trust you. At the end of the game, when you've like plotted four cards, like tracking the mana cost on all of them, it's like a total, total headache. So you plot face up, I know it seems like a little less of a plot, but it saves you from having to like prove the mana cost is correct and tracking it the whole game, which is always kind of a kind of a rough thing, trust me. Here's Thunder Salvo, which cares you about, you know, it's spell sling, you want to cast a lot of spells. Of course, in this Frontier Fantasy set, you want to have a bit of spell slinging going on, right? So, Razzle Dazzler, so many fun card names here. Here's a second spell card. Notably, um, it's easier to second spell in this set because of plot, right? So you can plot a card one turn, which is not casting a spell, and the next turn, play your plot card and play another card. You don't need two small spells necessarily, so it's a lot easier to second spell here than normal, which is why I'll see some cards about it. Another Skullduggery, there's you. Here's a cool uncommon. And speaking of not casting spells, this is the blue-white signpost uncommon. It rewards you for not casting spells from your hand. Why would you not want to do that? Well, sometimes, you know, just drawing a card is pretty sick. You can just pass the turn. But um, if you plot, that's once again not casting a spell. So with Gem Lightfoot, you can play it, and then if, the next turn, if you plot a card, you'll draw a card because you didn't cast a spell this turn. Also, there's a handful of flash cards in the set, so you can play on your opponent's turn a little, little bit. I drafted this set, uh, this deck, a couple times internally, and I really enjoyed it. It's very novel. You have to kind of know when to play spells, when not to play spells, when you want your cards to turn on, and when are you okay taking a turn off from them. Um, so yeah, this card is, is quite nice. Here's the Cunning Coyote, the, the half, we'll, I'm sure we'll see the Roadrunner later on, but it's a nice plot card. And this is one, yeah, maybe you want to hold off on this, right? You want to be able to play it on a future turn, and give your stuff haste. Um, so yeah, you're gonna put it down on turn two to, get, to do it um, for itself, just attack them for two. Or you can plot it to um, give a creature haste later on down the road, attack for more damage. Here's this Emergent Haunting featuring Surveil, which is of course now evergreen. You can use Surveil whenever we want. Just, um, yeah, you know, if you, once again, a card for the blue-white plot deck. This whole pack would be great for blue-white plot sealed. That's what I'm learning. Oh, uh, this is a, a pretty nice rare to crack open here. This is not only a big Hydra, XG Vigilance Trample Haste, get in for X right away, not too shabby, but when it dies, you make a ton of tapped treasure tokens. So, um, yeah, even if, if you play it for like three, X equals three on turn four. If it attacks in and you die, you'll have access to eight mana if I, if I did you hit your land drop on the next turn. Um, and, you know, in Commander, of course, you can go pretty crazy with this card. They do come in tapped. Um, we, we've been we tried, we tried to not do tap treasure where we can avoid it, but this card, it's just so easy to set up, you know, like loops and stuff where you're getting treasure back from it and then you're finding ways to recur it and replay it and sack it or whatever. The treasure kind of had to come in tapped here. Ooh, Buried in the Garden. This is a really recent reprint, um, but yeah, this is a card from the bonus sheet. Bonus sheet. I love seeing all the art on these. It's, it's so fun. And was that a, oh, look at this. Vile Smasher Gleeful Grenadier here at Uncommon. Cares about outlaws. As you might have imagined, black, red, like outlaws here. So two mana, three, two, that pings them. Get them, Vile Smasher. Get them. Oh, what a foil island. Shiny. And uh, yeah, this art card at the back. Four, Omen Port Vigilante. All right, through two packs. Making a decent time here. Yeah, you never know how long these videos are gonna take. Just kinda depends. <clears throat> I got some stuff to say about the set, though. 
All right, here's a creature that comes in and kills something. This kind of, we call it a euthanist ability because of Orzov euthanist. I don't know if you all have a better name out there that you like using it. If you have one, drop in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, this euthanizes a creature. Thanks, Guild Pact, for that name. Another one of these failed fordings, helping out with deserts. Another outlaw medic. Here's this Wolverine. Once again, a cool one to plot, right? You could play it on turn three, sure. Three, two, it's okay. You can plot it and get a card out of it next turn. Um, so yeah, it, it, you get the card back with all your mana untapped. So kind of fun to find these plot designs, seeing where they work. The, ooh, something that'll haunt your nightmares, the Cactarantula. Um, yeah, this is pretty big. It comes down on turn five if you don't have a desert, or sorry, if you do have a desert, rather, as a 6-5 reach that if your opponent kills, you draw a card from. This is a very strong green common in this set. Do not sleep on this. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, it's Pretty, pretty big deal. The reach is nice too, but mostly the five mana six five that uh, if they try and kill you draw a card out of is quite good. So uh, it's pretty easy to have one desert in play. There's this cycle of 10 tapped duels that deal one damage. So um, Cactarantula is good with those, gets the job done. You play one of those early and then, you know, you have a six five. Um, Here's another plot card, right? You might you could play this as a two mana three two trampler, which is certainly no joke. I mean, Garrick Companion is out there crying somewhere, by the way. So where is Garrick anyway? That's a story for another time. Uh, plot, but you can also just plot this guy and then pump uh, something, you know, pump something right away, which is fine. So either you can play it as a three two or plot it this turn and give a creature plus three plus two and trample. So this card is quite strong. I pick here. And like I said, I think this format does trend a little aggressive. So these kind of like punch through damage cards, very nice. At least that was my experience in, uh, in playtesting. Here's a card that finds mounts. Green white is the mount archetype, so you don't want that here. But you know, even if you don't have a lot of mounts, you can just find planes. The thing is, um, you know, when you're not finding something that is specific, like a specific type, like mount, it's usually pretty hard to guarantee you're going to have enough in your deck to hit. Because even if your deck has five or six mounts, which is a lot of mounts, you're not likely to necessarily hit with this card. So having the failsafe of planes, just so you can you know, hopefully draw a card here, um, you know, get a, get a little bit of value is great. Play this on turn two, find a planes, and maybe a mount if things work out. Okay, here's our first spree card. Now, I did a whole video talking about kind of how we got here, including talking about this, um, oop, see if the camera readjusts here, about the plus you'll see here in the top right-hand corner. But yeah, so spree is kind of this new mechanic. It's like a kicker uh, with a bit of strive or escalate there, where you always pay this cost, the red, red, and then you add these costs on to um, help to, to basically be able to do different things. You can do one uh, or both. Um, so you can add, you know, cast it for one RR to do either of these effects or two RR to do both of these effects. Um, so it really gives you a lot of modality. You can just pick, there's a ton of choices you can make on a spree card. So um, yeah, these are, these are pretty novel and kind of a new take on kind of just like circling the drain on some stuff you've seen before in a new, new way. And there are a lot of fun ones of these to make. They're also just the flexibility is so strong, right? The fact you can wrath their outlaws or non-outlaws or hit everything. This is just one example, but a lot of these are, are pretty good and the flexibility in limited is, is really nice. Here's this Stoic Sphinx, just a four mana, five, three flash flying uh, hex proof. Um, if you haven't cast a spell this turn, it's pretty hard, hard to deal with this thing. You know, he's flashed the thing down early. And once again, a great card for the No Spells deck in blue-white, because you can flash it in on their turn. So, it's pretty cool. Here's a Transmutation font. So, this is a card from the big score. So, kind of the story here is we had a epilogue set, like March the Machine Aftermath, penned up for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. After seeing the feedback on March the Machine's Aftermath, we had made all the cards, but didn't, you know, didn't want to release another one of those sets. So we're like, what if we just rolled them into the set? So there's extra cards you'll find here in the set. They all have this big B-I-G um, down there. And uh, these can do some pretty off the wall things. We were kind of reached into a bag of mechanics for this. So a lot of old stuff. This makes bloods, clues, and foods. Blood last seen in um, Crimson Val. And then you can a tutor for artifacts if you have a bunch of different artifact tokens. So this is a pretty wacky card. It's really not the kind of thing we would normally do in a set, but coming in hot from uh, you know what would have been the epilogue into this big score right here, the transmutation font. Kind of a, a wacky throwback card. Oh, here's Void Rend, a cool white, blue, black card coming in from um, uh, Streets, Streets of Nuka Penna. Stagecoach encounters one more magical vortex than expected. Yeah, you don't don't you don't, don't love to see that. Woo! Well, there's something right there, yonder folks. Here is Oko, Thief of Crowns. Yes, that's right, Broko Oko, the one from a Throne of Eldraine that is banned many places. 
here he is. Uh, you can find it in these packs. I am sorry if your um, opponent plays against you unlimited because it is pretty savage. Uh, but yeah, we open it up in foil here in this special Prosperity Post treatment. So that's one cool open to start with. Drop this in your cube or wherever Oko is still legal. Not a ton of places, as it turns out. Uh, this card is pretty ridiculous. You elk your creatures all up with this good old Oko Thief of Crowns. And here's one of the lands. Here's one of these desert lands. They show up in the land slot sometimes. And uh, yeah, these ping your opponents. They're the opposite of gain lands, which once again contributes to that, that kind of a more aggressive format. They're deserts too. All right. Well, that was exciting. That Oko is a nice, a nice pull right there. Okay. Here's a Scarecrow. You don't see those every day, right? You last saw them in, well, I mean, you, know, you didn't last see them, but in my mind, Scarecrows are always associated with Shadow Moor and the Reaper King. But uh, yeah, of course, in a set out here in the frontier, well, why not have a, a Scarecrow around? That makes a lot of sense. A little bit of mana fixing, a little bit of life gaining. Here's another Spree card. Once again, pretty good flexibility here, right? You can pay three mana to uh, time ebb one of their cards, which is great, frankly. And if you want to give your creature a little bit of unblockability in the mix, you can you can do that. I think usually it's the bottom mode that's gonna be the real exciting one. Three mana sorcery time ebb is a really big deal. Um, but you can also use the other one just for a bit of extra, bit of extra push, get some damage through, whatever it is you need to do there. Armored Armadillo, or as I like to call this card, Armadillo. Um, yeah, just a, you know, one drop can get in there later on in the game. Slow things down. Like I said, the, it, the format is a little faster, but there are some cards like this to slow it down. And in the blue-white deck in particular, you're going to want stuff like this. Also keep in mind in blue-white that activated abilities on creatures are particularly great because you get to, um, you know, you can put all your mana into them instead of casting a spell. So this card is a, a nice blue-white card, certainly. Quick drop! Uh, yeah, gives yourself first strike, takes it away from them. Draw first and uh, hit whatever they have right out of their hands. Reach for the sky, which I think you can only say that way, actually. There's probably no other way to say that phrase. Um, little aura, but keep in mind it gives you a card back at the end. So um, a lot of the problems with auras is their card disadvantage. Well, this one makes up for it a little, little bit. Lead designer Dave Humphreys loves these aura combat tricks. He, he puts them in his deck a lot and often smashes people with them. Is it because he's a Hall of Famer or because they're better than we all think? I'll let uh, you decide. Discerning Peddler, just a little two mana, two, two um, rummager. Nice, nice. I love that um, the flavor text kind of hints at what's going on here where, you know, he's selling stuff from all over. It's, uh, or excuse me, I think she is selling stuff from all over. They, whoever's in the art there, selling stuff from all over. Um, it's a, you know, the set has people coming from all over Omen Paths to visit here, Thunder Junction. And so kind of showing, hey, you know, this is a character who uh, is selling stuff from all these different places. Adds a bit of texture to the world that I really enjoy. Gold Pan, yeah, I remember playing with this card a bunch in Limited and it was a great early concept that stuck all the way through. So makes a treasure token, you find it in your pan and then it's just a plus one, plus one equipment after that. Yeah, this card is, is pretty decent, I think, so. In Limited, to be clear. <clears throat> Here's a, a clone with plot. Once again, a really nice card to plot because on a later turn you can plop it down as a copy of whatever else you put into play that turn. So it's a great one to plot and just kind of linger out over to the side casting um, you know, casting fear into your opponent with you copying a bomb or big flyer or something similar. Here's Lazav, <laughs> who is uncommon now, just slowly flipping you know, more and more into obscurity here. Lazav, of course, loves committing crimes and uh, yeah, just visiting this world and committing some crimes on his way. Thunder Lasso. This card uh, was also a very strong limited card, a solid pick out of this pack. Um, you get to not only give equipment to your creature, but tap their stuff as you're attacking with it. Here's Marchesa, who is here, vacationing from uh, Fiora. Or perhaps not on a vacation, perhaps, you know, scouting it out for other reasons. Who am I to judge what Marchesa is doing? Um, this is a card that I actually remember giving a lot of feedback on that I didn't, I personally was um, not the, I don't want to say not the largest fan, but a little, little worried about this design because... It's so self-fueling, right? You commit a crime, and then you pay one, and it's easy to find another crime to commit again. Uh, so I was worried this would just be like a murder all your stuff deck, right? Kill your thing, pay one mana, find another murder, kill your thing, etc., etc. But uh, after, you know, a bunch of folks played with it and tried it out, turns out it was mostly mostly fun. So uh, that, some of that can still happen. So if you get, you know, infinity crimed on Marchesa, well, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty a pretty popular card internally. 
You use Essence Capture, you target their spell, so a bit of a crime right there. Counter spells, definitely, definitely crimes. Come on. Counter spells, we all can all agree those are crimes. Here's a Foil Quilled Charger, another menace creature, but it's cute. It's a porcupine mount. I'll say when you are riding a porcupine mount, you gotta be very careful, though. Uh, you know, here's that Forlorn Flats. This is another one of those desert lands. And then, uh, add at the end. All right, on to the next booster pack here. All right, Mystical Tether. Here's your good old Exile a Creature, Banishing Light spell. It's Artifacts 2, and you can pay five mana to cast it with Flash, which once again is not only relevant to be a combat trick, but also very good in the blue-white deck because you can do it on their turn and get all of your triggers in blue-white to go off, so that's nice. Here's that Quilt Charger again. Here's the Tumbleweed Rising, a plot card. Once again, another thing you want to cast later on down the road. You plot it for three, and then on a future turn, when you've got, you know, you play your 4-4, four, four, bam, you slam this thing down and get two 4-4s four, right away. So, kind of a neat, neat way to play that. Another cool plot card, right? You want to wait till something's died to plot it out. So, a lot of very clever plot designs here. This guy gets bigger when you've committed crimes, so... Um, you know, if you're in, in the market for crimes, this can be a 3-4 Vigilance in blue. Not too shabby. Just gotta make sure some crimes happen. Here's that Peddler again. Throw from a Saddle, right? So this is just a good old Bite spell. Gives it plus one, plus one. But if it's a mount, you get a little bit of a bonus. So we make some cards like this to help out archetypes. It's a card you'll play a lot of the time anyway. It's just a Bite. These are pretty good and limited. Um, but if it's a mount, you get a little bonus. So anyone can take and play this, but green, white, and you know anyone with a lot of mounts will take this a little bit higher, which is really nice for kind of just incentivizing you for limited. So flashback is not a uh, mechanic in the set, but these days we are allowed to just use flashback in sets instead of you know writing it out a weird or long way or what have you. And uh, yeah, this card is a cool one to be able to plot out because later on you can flashback something that is in your graveyard, you'll have the mana up for it, so kind of a cool thing. Double up on removal spell, crime them again, whatever the case may be with this slick shot lock picker. Requisition Raid, just a super flexible white spell, right? You get to kill off an artifact, kill off an enchantment, or put a counter on all your creatures. This card is really strong. Um, you can not only make your team big, which is a great mode with it, but there are enough artifacts and enchantments running around that you can two for one with this while pumping your team. This card is really strong. So um, yeah, you, you'll pick this and play it limited. You could even have constructed sideboard applications. Probably not, but uh, just you know, being able to two for one off this thing, hull breach style. I, I love a hull breach. Good stuff. Tomb Trawler for the player that wants the game to go along and make sure you never deck out. Here's this. Just kind of gums up the ground a little bit, giving stuff back into your library. Here's a, a card that deals a bunch of damage and makes treasure. Once again, that tapped treasure. So we're trying not to do that too much, but there's some of it here. And uh, yeah, just a good old X burn spell. Gotta love those. There's plenty of them in Magic, but this is a new take on it, making a bunch of treasure. You play this thing, the next turn, you cast an even bigger one. No, probably not, though. Uh, Skewer the Critics. Great uh, reprint, inspired, um, or you know, coming back from Ravnica. Put this in your cubes or so on. Cool new look. Giant Beaver is here. Saddle him up. That's a foily beaver. And then we got an island and a little art card here at the end of uh, Wily Duke. Okay, on to the next booster pack. All right, how many packs do we through? This is pack... Is this pack four? This is pack five. Pack five, and we're a half hour or so in, almost a half hour in. All right, well, you know, that's how things go here. I've seen that one already. This one wants you to commit crimes on your turn. Um, part of the reason why, why does this one say your turn? Well, we found that when your opponent has this card and you don't know if they can commit a crime or not, it just feels so bad to attack into, right? Can you even attack? Um, if your opponent has this thing untapped and, you know, if you have any kind of on-board way to commit a crime or just enough mana untapped, it's really scary to attack into. So, yes, it works on offense. It's as sort of a combat trick if you want, but it doesn't stymie your opponent from attacking, you know, which is nice. So th that's kind of the small small degree of why, uh, small degree game design thing of why it says during your turn on overzealous muscle here. The Phantom Interference, another one that I've enjoyed playing with a lot, right? You can either play it as Quench or make a 2-2, and ideally, if things go well, do both. So five mana, make a 2-2 counter unless they pay two. It's like a common Mystic Snake, sort of. Um, it does have flying, so it's, it's like a common Mystic Snake card. Anyway, love this card. Another Mystical Tether, another Quill Charger. We've seen a lot of the commons at this point. Here's Ruthless Lawbringer. This card is quite nice. 
This is a, you know your classic kind of aristocratic style card. It just enters the battlefield and bone splinters. Notably, it can though destroy non-land permanents, so your opponent's banishing lights or you know bomb artifacts or whatever are are not safe. One thing we've tried to do is make sure that in limited, especially in play booster world, there are answers to um, bombs, especially the non-creature bombs, those are often hard to deal with. So you'll see a little bit more showing up of stuff like non-land permanent or creature artifact or enchantment, just to give you some extra outs toward those strong cards that may appear. Kill off that Oko, for example, that we saw earlier. Here's another Oblivion Ring style card. This Oblivion Ring is a creature and you can get a mercenary. I remember when I was looking through the set, um, kind of midway through, I saw this and the common Oblivion Ring and was like, do we really gotta do two of these? Because we often only do one in a set. Um, but there's no reason why we can't do two. And if, the, if white needs the removal spells, it's a good form of white removal. So it just made a lot of sense to do this kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so it's a little different take on it than the common one. The Forsaken Miner. This guy is a great card to sacrifice if you have a repeated way to commit crimes. B22 can't block. Already a, kind of an exciting stat line. He comes back so easily. Uh, I predict you'll be seeing this card around, and not always just for the attacking purposes, sometimes just for the combo synergies. Right? Sack it, commit a crime, pay black, bring it back. Yeah, this is a, this is a scary one. Double down. This is a very exciting, nice open. Copies all your outlaws. Simple, sweet. But a really nice card if you've got outlaws rolling around. Honestly, Fear Deck doesn't have to be all outlaws either. If you just have enough, this card is this card is great. It does not legend wash though. So we're trying to. I've heard a lot of feedback on legend washing. We're trying to be careful about when and where we deploy it. Um, and yeah, so you can't just copy your commander easily with this. Uh, we're trying to be intentional about where it shows up, and you got en enough other outlaws. We don't need to legend wash here. You'll see it more in like universes beyond sets where there are a ton of legends rolling around, and you kind of need it on your clones. But here, you don't need it in this set. Here's another card from the big score with World Walker Helm. This card makes map tokens. So uh, our two big score cards. We've seen a bunch of weirdo token makers here. Um, yeah, we. we did a bunch of wild stuff uh, reaching back in the past with these cards. And this card can just keep making artifact tokens. So um, every time you do, you'll make a map. So um, really, really kind of self propagates here. Exciting card. Hypothesizzle, one of my favorite, uh, among my favorite cards to say, originally from Ravnica. Cool, uh, cool bonus sheet card here for blue red. A foil, Ariet's Lullaby. Just kills off a creature, gain some life, sure, foil. Here's the green-white desert. Green-white card dealing damage? It's true. And Cruel Ultimatum. Wow, nice uh, nice art card for Cruel Ultimatum here. It's one of my favorites. Cruel Ultimatum is definitely a crime. As it turns out, casting Cruel Ultimatum is certainly a crime. All right, on to the next pack. <clears throat> Here's one that uh, I've played a lot with. It's three mana, three, three base. Or if you plot it, it comes in as a five mana, uh, or sorry, as a, as a, as a 5-5, five, five, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah. We've come a long way from Centaur Corsair. This one just comes in and mills you for a little bit while being a 2-2 two, two to boot. Good old Desperate Bloodseeker. Lone Shark. This is a great one to plot because it's pretty easy to, you know, circle up and draw a card off at next turn by casting another spell and then cast this and draw a card. So you kind of get to decide. Do you want to play the 4-mana 3-4 mode or the plot mode where you draw a card next turn? Usually you want to do the next turn, but hey, if you need a 4-drop drop to play on a curve, you can always play this guy on a curve if you need a, need a creature there. It's a, a take on sort of the unruly mob, angry mob card you've seen a bunch of times before. Except this one's a three mana three three, so a big burly vengeful townsfolk. Trick shot, boom boom. Uh, this uh, kills off a creature. You know, there's the five mana deal five, five mana deal six card. We've seen plenty of these in the past. Um, what is the little upside this one has? Well, it uh, shoots a creature token for two damage as well. So you can deal with one of those mercenaries, which is nice. Get those off the board. Kind of the main use here. Another one of these. Oh, prairie dog, just pooping, booping. Is his head up a little, little bit. Um, and yeah, this is a card that gets bigger when you don't cast spells, so a good card for that blue-white archetype. You curve this thing into a, um, a plot spell, it'll become a 3-3 three, three on that turn. It has an activated ability you can hold up and use if you want to, so... You know, to make sure if you're not going to cast a spell, you still get a bonus out of it. Essentially putting two counters on it at end of, end of turn, so... And also, it's a 2-mana 2 lifelink, so there you go. Plus, it's a squirrel, so you gotta love that. Here's this Spinewoods Armadillo. This you can either, 
land slash desert cycle for and gain some life or if a six mana seven seven reach ward yeah this thing is good because you basically always get functionality out of this whether it's early game or late game so yeah this is a strong card two mana lay of the land can get deserts can gain you three life it's shockingly strong just making sure that you can you know hit your land drops um and give you a little bit of life back if you're racing or so on and then this body is, is great that is one big armadillo Here's this rambling possum. It just loves to talk and talk and talk. No, I don't think that's what the rambling here is. Maybe that's what I am, though. Maybe I'm a rambling possum. Anyway, though, uh, this can pick up your creatures back to your hand, letting you reuse their ETBs, letting you replot them if you want to, to, you know, tr trigger, um, trigger like, play two spells in a turn later on. Um, and it's also just a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three. so another 3-mana three 3-3 three, three. gets in some damage. So we're mostly, uh, you know, have a lot of saddles here, but of course we've also got some vehicles. Wouldn't be a, this set's theme without some vehicles. So this one likes having mounts because they carry the mobile homestead along, but, um, you know, also you can just crew it normally and hopefully you find some lands. Around you have Explorer Scope, which is a card that when it hit was amazing, when it didn't was frustrating. So um, see how you feel about the mobile homestead here. Here's the Toru coming in fresh from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. So this is good, of course, if you're plotting, but also great with, with uh, ninjas because, you know, they, they were not cast. So you get to just sneak them in and draw a card. A great little crossover card here. Very nice. There's a Toru. Anguish Unmaking, another cool card off the bonus sheet. Foil Outlaw Stitcher. Makes you, uh, makes you some zombie rogues, and if you cast enough spells, you can uh, make them even bigger. So another, you probably get, are going to get tired of me saying this, but oh wow, you can plot this and do something cool with it later. That's why you would plot it. Yes, it is clever. Yes, we think we're clever. That's the answer to everything. And here's the planes. And there's one of those mercenaries. We haven't seen one of these guys yet, but here's this mercenary token right there. All right, very cool. On to the next booster pack here. I've seen a lot of the commons at this point, but still some we haven't. The deserts do. Here's stop cold, just a little tap and freeze. Once again, note this can target artifacts and creatures and it makes it lose all of its abilities once again helping stop like artifact bombs and things like that from causing you trouble so trying to find extra ways to deal with those it's a little flyer that makes a mercenary very nice one in griffin um here's a trumpet blast we've been talking a lot recently about if trumpet blast is an appropriate common because either it's you play you like basically if you put it in in a, at common in a draft Almost no one plays it, except for the one guy that really wants it, and then they have access to as many as they need, because no one else tends to play these cards. So there's been some talks about moving these up to uncommon, but for here anyway, in this set, it's still common. We give you a nice rider on it of letting you, um, uh, you know, slow draw a card, uh, impulse draw a card here. And one thing we've been trying to do with card, these kind of effects is find ways to make you play them not just on the turn you kill people, right? It's not just about going wide, casting and killing your opponent. It's a little, little bit about casting it a little early, sort of like a, a, we call it a beta strike sometimes, beta strike, where you're like not alpha striking them to kill them, but you just attack them and you cast this and get chip in some damage. And so giving you a reward that makes you want to survive the turn, it's not just about, you know, killing off your opponent, but you might play it early and get a bonus out of it. Helps you do that a little bit. Little beta strike card. Little 4-2 saddler, can have all your things trample if you uh, saddle it up. Plus you get to ride a bear, so uh, that's kind of cool. Another one of these lullabies. Paladin, plot this guy, turn four, play at turn five. I have done my fair share of that, that's for sure. Here's Baron Bertram Greywater. Um, gives you extra tokens when you make tokens, and then lets you sack them for cards. For all you Aristocrats fans out there, you want to play the kind of sack deck, yep, Black White is doing that here. Just gives you lots of fodder, lets you toss money to draw cards. If you're playing Black White, Baron Bertram is the guy you want. Ferocification, besides being a great name, um, both helps make sure that your creatures uh, are always uh, sizable and lets you get in with your new creatures right away. Um, if you're playing with both a bunch of mercenaries, right, this card is particularly nice because you can pump up your creatures and your 1-1s one and turn them into 3-1s three, three that are attacking. So, Plus it's got this great name, Ferocification. Binding Negotiation, a nice discard spell. Um, this does work, which was pointed out, uh, it's kind of interesting, with Deep Cavern Bat. So uh, if you look at their hand, you can also take the card underneath Deep Cavern Bat uh, from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which is kind of funny. But other than that, just a nice little distressy style card. Once again, a way to fight bombs. 
hang out here. Plus constructed level discard spell. Okay, join up. So there's a whole cycle of these join up cards for all the cards in the main main crew. Here's Rakdos's. You bring someone back from the dead, and then when a legendary dare creature dies, it deals uh, some damage to your opponents. So mostly a reanimation spell that makes it bigger, plus you get to deal some damage to your opponent. Exciting card. Legendary Enchantment. Oh, here's a fun one. It is a split card from the bonus sheet, Crime and Punishment. It's got crime in the name, so of course we had to do it um, and make a special uh, split card frame just, uh, just for a couple cards here. Um, and yeah. Here's a Crime Punishment, a cool throwback there. Foil, Boneyard Desecrator. Once you just sacrifice your outlaws. Outlaws, beware. But, you know, it's all for a good, good cause, killing your opponent. Foil Planes, too, double foil. And a Mercenary. There it is. All right. On to the next pack. Another one of these Wolverines, Grizzly, this Assassin, Stop Cold, Wanted Griffin. We've seen a lot of these comes. Oh, Gold Rush. Here's an Uncommon. Shares the name with a Taylor Swift song, so adds one to the Taylor Swift secret lair. <laughs> but in, a, in, in reality, this guy's card is pretty nice. You can amass some treasure in this set, for sure. You've seen a number of cards so far that make treasure, and this can um, deal a bunch of damage, especially if you're fortunate enough to have one of those X uh, make treasure cards. You can just pound your opponent out of nowhere with this, so... Yeah, it uh, both essentially refunds a mana with the treasure token, gives them plus two, plus two, but can scale way up. So I've attacked, I think, for six or eight with this and limited before. It's quite doable, so watch out for the gold rush. Um, this card is just a murder if you want it to be, or it can also make a token. I think you're not going to play it at the two mana mode very often, because I think you really want to save and hold out for the um, removal mode here. But playing it at five mana to make a one, one, and kill off a creature is nice. Keep in mind this is an instant two, so that one one can come into play and either block right away, you don't even trade with their creature right away. So really nice card here, this unfortunate accident. Unfortunate for your opponents, perhaps, I, I would say on this card. Aired Archway, so not everything here it, that's a desert is one of those common um, common tap lands, there's lots of other ones. This is a take on a bounce land. So this is a, a colorless bounce land that also lets you surveil one if you pick up a desert. So it's just another one of, um, Guildless Commons, I believe, is the card that I made in a Commander Legends. So yeah, Aired Archway, just a better Guildless Commons, bit of bit, bit of desert synergy. Have fun with that one. Stubborn Burrow Fiend uh, get, lets you mill cards and gets uh, when it gets saddled, then gets bigger for them. So plays into any graveyard strategy you have lying around, but also two mana two two that just gets bigger. Kind of nice, and. Uh, it's also a Badger Beast mount, so you know, gotta love all these fun fun types you get to mount up here. Here's Obeka, Obika. I think it's Obika, not Obeka, but I could be wrong. Um, this, um, yeah, so we saw the first one in Commander Legends where it just ended the turn for you. So we knew in doing another one, it had to do something with time magic, and this one was a really fun, really fun take on that of uh, yeah, hitting your opponent and then getting a bunch of upkeeps. What are you gonna do with this? Who knows, who knows, but... Um, yeah, I've, I have a lot of them making cards like this, including cards as recent as the Ninth Doctor. Uh, it gives you extra upkeeps every turn. I love Paradox Haze, so this is a fun one to build with. Pumping this up, taking five upkeeps? Come on, what's not to love there? Imp's Mischief. Ooh, I love this one from Planar Chaos that uh, lets you change the target of spells. P people never see this coming in Commander, or frankly, Unlimited. You can really mess up someone's day with, uh, with this card. It's totally mess up what they're targeting. Had the removal spell target themselves. Foil Jolene, Jolene, the plundering Pugliest. Doesn't rhyme as well, but hey, it's still great. It's all peas. And uh, yeah, if you've got power for a greater, which, uh, hey, Jolene certainly does. You make some treasure. And you can also ping with your treasure, which is uh, pretty good to have on board. Good with the gold rush card we saw earlier for you treasure fans. And a foil mountain, love getting these foily lands, and another mercenary. You're going to need these guys in this set. A lot of mercenaries bopping around. Okay, on to the next pack. Ooh, I can't we haven't seen yet. The Bridled Bighorn. This makes sh little sheepies when you saddle it up. Those sheepies can then saddle it later on, so I don't know what the story is there, but uh, you can draw it yourself. Here's the Prickly Pear. Two, three mana two two that comes into play and makes a mercenary. Nice, nice. I love the, I love the name, right? Prickly Pear. I normally think of it being a pear, as in the fruit, but here it's a pair of people. Fun at play. Snakeskin Veil is back. A great little trick. One mana, put a counter on something, give it hexproof. Just a really nice version of, uh, of this trick. Been reprinted a few times now. Corrupted Conviction. 
little um, Alter's Reap, but only one mana. Two mana for Alter's Reap, too much. This is a one mana one. It's, it's often so hard to get these cards into decks and leave the mana open for them, especially in these tempo heavy formats. So one mana draw two if you sack a creature is nice. Here's a card that wants you to cast spells on your opponent's turn. Once again, playing into that blue-white strategy where you often will play things off turn a little bit to get your triggers. A lot of fun ways to play that. Here's the Strix. Um, you you know, the tapping, whatever, it's fine. If you draw it late, it gives you action. But the big thing is just having this looter available is really nice to find what you need. Um, if the game does go on, it can be fast, but if it does go on, this is the kind of card you want on your side. Okay, here's the throwback to Disinformation Campaign. If you remember that card, I lo love Disinformation Campaign. Now, the, them discarding the card on Disinformation Campaign was pretty brutal and frankly not that fun. So this version does not make them discard a card. Uh, but it does come back over and over again as you commit crimes, lets you draw cards, drains them a little bit. Really, uh, really, really fun kind of build around here for the crime deck in blue-black. Rattleback Apothecary. This is a gives your other stuff menace and lifelink. Can also give itself medicine lifelink if you want as you uh, commit crimes. I uh, I remember getting hit just constantly wowed by this card because my opponents unlimited would uh, I didn't know if they were going to be able to commit a crime or not, so I wasn't sure if I could attack because they were gonna have menace on the backswing. Anyway, this card is uh, already three mana three two death death touch with upside. Card you'll uh, card you'll put in your deck if you're doing some crimes. Here's an overrun variant. All your creatures get plus two plus two and trample and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So sort of like this set's take on Overrun. We're always looking for like, like the sweet spot between Overrun and uh, something that's maybe a touch less powerful because that card really ends games unlimited. So we've kind of settled on the plus two plus two granting when it comes along with Trample, but another small bonus. And uh, this one's certainly good enough to get play in your decks. Return the Favor, a fun one here. It's either Reverberate, where you get to copy uh, instant sort of sorcery spell, or lets you uh, change the target of a spell, too, so you can really mess your opponents up, right? You, um, your opponent casts a removal spell, you tap four mana, you copy it to kill off their thing and turn the first one back at them. Yeah, this can be quite powerful. And keep in mind, this also copies activated and triggered abilities. I think we do not see very often. A pretty unique and, uh, and cool card here. Pillage the Bog. I know this card has had a lot of discussion as like, you get to see, see so many cards with this, right? Once you have five lands in play, you get to dig through the top 10 cards of your library and find what, what you're looking for. So this is a really nice way to dig deep into your deck and find the card. Some people have called this like, you know, Demonic Tutor Light or something. So not quite that in Commander, you know, because you have so many cards to dig through, but this card is, is a great way to find what you're looking for. And I would expect to see a little, little bit of play, you know, see some play all around here. Decisive Denial, little little card here, back. See this this little guy swooping in on this poor animal. Don't do it. Beast Bond Outcaster, cares about four power. Really nice card, you can pull out on turn two and then play it on turn three. So um, even if you don't have a four power creature then, you just you know spend two mana on turn two to have a three three on turn three is nice. Here's that Eroded Canyon, this is the blue red one of these. Oh, and we got a signed, little signed card here for Oko. It's cool, signed art art card. Nice, all right, on to the next pack. All righty. Consuming Ashes, kill off a creature, and if it's small, surveil too. You always wanna kill off the big things, so we don't need to reward you for that, but sometimes at times if you target a small thing, we give you a little reward. Also helps smooth you um, as well, right? If the game is kind of, you're having kind of a tough draw, and you gotta force the, yourself to use this on the early thing, hey, you get a little bonus to help smooth out your draw. So it's a subtle little way to help smooth your draws out there. Daring Thunder Thief, a four mana four four in blue, which you certainly do not see very often. Um, it comes in tapped, so you can't you know block with it, but it, it more importantly, I think most importantly, in addition to just being a four mana four four in blue, it can be played off turn, right? So your opponents, um, you know, after you've triggered all your cards by not playing a spell that turn, you can flash this guy out, which is nice. It's also a turtle rogue, which is very fun for coming to play tapped. A flash turtle, never thought, uh, you don't see it, see a ton of those. But I guess when you come to play tapped, it works. I guess there are some other ones that happen. Steer clear, great name. Deals two or deals four if you have a mount. Or the four year mount strategy. This is kind of an interesting one, the, the Highway Robbery. This is a, kind of a new take on Tormenting Voice that also lets you sack a land to do it. So, um, right, you don't, in late game, you don't pitch another card. You don't have to worry about, uh-oh, I got to keep a planes in my hand at all times to be able to do this. You just play your lands out unfettered, and then later on, uh, when you draw this, you can just sack the land that you played out. So uh, it's just a nice little quality of life thing there. I'm curious to see 
how often it comes up. Hard Bristle Bandit, little mana elf that can untap if you commit crimes. Maybe get a little extra mana out of it. So it's a little bit of a mathy card because you can tap it to um, cast a spell that commits a crime to then untap it, but uh, pretty exciting card too. Especially if you can commit some crimes off turn to make even more mana. Here's a Desecrator again. Doc Arlock, just a fun, once again, another fun name to say. This is uh, for all you plotting, plotting people out there. So you want to plot it up with this card. It's also a bear druid, so that's cool. Here's a nice uncommon sphinx, wants you to commit some crimes and surveil. Bovine Intervention, I think this card was called, what was it called? Cows to Plowshares? I can't remember the, the name in playtesting, but it had some, had some great names. I love the name Bovine Intervention, though I think it's an incredible card name, also very nice. Um, yeah, this is your kind of white removal spell that kills something, and gives you them something in return. Um, for, Two mana, give them a 2-2 two, two ox, I'll happily kill whatever they have. No problem. Bovine Intervention. Here's Bonnie Pal, Clear Cutter. Um, this makes an ox. I hope we open up the, the ox token. That'd be fun. It's sort of a blue-green card that hits all the notes of blue-green card. Makes tokens. Check. Cares about lands. Check. Draws cards. Yes. Let's you play lands. Yes. It's a very good value card here, Bonnie Pal. And uh, a, pal to, a pal to Mini, this giant scout that clear cuts the way. Ooh, another big card. Here's the Lotus Ring. I remember I gave, gave some feedback on this. I think I gave this card Indestructible. That was my the, the, my suggestion. They're like, how can we make this card look even cooler? And I was like, Indestructible would be awesome. Anyway, um, yeah, this uh, turns any one of your creatures into a Black Lotus. So uh, what could go wrong? You know, probably nothing. It's fine. I love the art, though. Elena Danner, man, she just kills it on, on these uh, Lotuses. Jewel Lotus, also a fave. Ride Down. This card is, can be savage if you're not expecting it. You kill off the creature and give your thing trample, deal a ton extra damage to your opponent. It's a fast format, so watch out. Vault Plunderer is here. This is like a three mana, three one that cantrips. I love Phyrexian Rager. I'm a huge Phyrexian Rager fan, and this card, well, harkens right back to the Phyrexian Rager and all of us. Here's the Black Red, much better home for dealing one damage. It just feels right here with the Jagged Barons. Oh, and this cool Pillage the Bog art card. Okay, I'm gonna keep on moving here. Still so many packs left. We got a lot to get through. Bristle Pack Sentry cares about power for a greater, so that's one of the archetypes here. Little plant wolf guy. Commons, we've seen these guys. Oh, here's a phone I've been waiting for a while to show up. This is, I've shown you, uh, talked about a lot of the plot synergies of playing these off turn, but I haven't been able to find a lot that actually wants you to do it. Um, actually, pass your turn. Here's a great example. If you don't cast a spell from your hand this turn um, and it doesn't have a flying counter, it gets a flying counter, right? So you can. Um, you can pass, basically just pass the turn to your opponent and get a flying counter on this guy. Um, so kind of a big question, do you do you cast a spell this turn, do you pass? And if you plot that turn or play a card that was plotted, once again, only it it's just from your hand, so if you cast a plotted card, you're fine. It still gets its counter. So it's a nice little, nice little incentive there. Because if you get a three mana two, two, four flyer eventually, that's a, that's a great rate here. Another one of these guys, another one of those, another one of those. Here's Eartha Joe, a red-white signpost. Gives you a mercenary and then copies the abilities uh, when you target something, um, when you activate the ability to target something, which all your mercenaries do, right? So this lets all your mercenaries double double up. So you can tap a mercenary to give something plus two plus O, or even split it to do two plus one plus O's. So um, this already gives you one mercenary to play with. But if you're playing red-white, hopefully you have more mercenaries so you can do this even more times and make your creatures huge. Pretty, pretty cool take on it there. I also think in Commander, this is gonna be a fun one to build around. A lot of goofy stuff you can do with that last ability. I'm sure it's not broken, no problem. I always love a good rescuing card and this Nurturing Pixie can rescue something back and let you cast it again, get that nice ETB bonus. And make it a 2-2 to boot. Love that, cool art too. Here's this uh, Switcheroo style card. <laughs> The main use case here, I think, is going to be 2UU to switch two creatures around, but you can also switch around some artifacts or enchantments if they've got something strong going on. In Commander 2, this card can cause a lot of chaos. You can switch switcheroo the creature you want, but also trade around someone's artifacts. You can hit anyone, not just yourself. So this card is definitely going to commit some crimes. Claim Jumper, another name that I really enjoyed, plus the Rabbit Mercenary. Um, this is a... Uh, all right, this is a, a white catch-up land card. We've been doing more of these. A note we have gotten and noticed is as we've done more and more of these, we're, you know, there's a bunch of strong ones out there. And people are enjoying playing with them. They've helped white out and commander a lot. But they also have diminishing returns. 
because the more you have, the, you know, once you're caught up, they stop working, right? So you don't need tons and tons of them. This is one of the strongest ones we've made because it lets you double up, so this is still a cool card to exist. But I think we're going to investigate even more ways for white, or, you know, maybe just different ways for white to help catch up that isn't just, hey, do you have more lands than me? Because it only works while you're behind. That said, this card is, uh, is quite nice at both ramping you or even double ramping you, uh, which is you know, pr pretty important if you're going to catch up with all those tricky green players. Hindering Light, oh, one of my faves. This is a card that whenever you get someone with you just feel so good. You get to counter that their spell and draw a card. A lot of things target you or your permanents because of the crimes in this set, so Hindering Light, a lot more reasonable to main deck. I love it, encountering their crime, you in turn to a crime. Speaking of doing crimes, here's a uh, draw spell that costs a little less if you've committed a crime this turn. So, seize the secrets. Nice. Eroded Canyon there. And, uh, yeah, Rakdos. Rakdos is art there by Mr. Greg Staples. All right, on to the next pack. Here is Mourner's Surprise. This is a little raised dead that uh, gives you a mercenary, so kind of two creatures for one here. Note, though, the up to one is a very subtle thing, but it does let you just cast this on turn two if you want, right? You don't have to have a creature card to target to just run this out. You can pay two mana and make a mercenary if you want to, so... Gives you a little bit of flexibility if your curve is, is tough and you're okay doing that. Got to look for those uh, up twos, you know. Sterling Hound, just a little come and surveil. It, it is, you know, a nice just curve filler. It certainly isn't an embarrassing artifact to play. Surveil too, fine, can dig into what you're looking for. I'm not looking to play this card, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not you know, sometimes in some sets, artifact creatures you like really don't want to put in your limited deck. Just like the generic common ones. Um, this guy though, I don't mind him. Here's this Shepherd of the Clouds. Um, this card uh, comes in, it's five mana, four, three flying vigilance, solid stats, close to Sarah Angel. Gets to raise dead something, it's small. But if you have a mount, it comes back into play. So this is a, a nice card almost any deck would probably consider putting in, but if you've got mounts, even better. Also this gorgeous Pegasus. Plan the Heist, another one that's fun to plot. You plot this and then uh, you, you try and wait until maybe you have no cards in your hands. So you can surveil three, then draw three. Of course, honestly, if you just cast it for, as for concentrate, no shame whatsoever, right? Four mana, draw three cards, plenty strong. Uh, this card has been a, this kind of effect has been huge in um, limited formats in the past. So, um, yeah, but you can plot it. It's a great top deck, too. Another reason to play out all those lands. Here's another desert. Make stuff not block. Keep an eye on your opponent's land row. You don't want to get got by this. Don't let them hide it. Don't let them hide it. Make sure that the stance or verge happens. Oh, there's Rakdos. Rakdos the muscle right there. Mythic rare Rakdos is here. A new take on this guy. Kind of a, kind of cool to see him off Ravnica. So, yeah, a mercenary, you know. Search him up with your uh, Mercadian Mask Block cards. Steal their stuff. It's a good time. And here's Calamity Galloping in Inferno. A... Um, a, uh, a, a pretty cool horse, as it were, a little little horse mount. Copy stuff, so, yeah, this is, it's expensive, but it does have haste, so you can do it right away, and, um, yeah, know, this, this card, it might be a six mana card, but do not be fooled by how much damage this can deal. Oh, one of my favorites from Invasion, Repulse, three mana bounce a creature, draw a card. Whew, gonna teach a whole new generation about this. It's probably not quite as good as it used to be when it's, you know, a very card of energy format, but still feels good to put your creature back and draw your card, so I'd still play this a lot of the time. I just love that card. Here's a nice one. It's either Inspiration or a Combat Trick or both. Cast this in combat and absolutely blow your opponent out with Metamorphic Blast. And here in foil. Woo, got one of these Full Art Swamps. Very nice. And then a Gnome at the back. This is for the big tokens, so... Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll get a card that makes a gnome a little later on. We're going to have to see. Have to see. Gnome's coming in hot. I last seen in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. All right. Here's a bunch of commons. Probably seen these. Ooh. Brimstone Roundup. Here's a new uncommon for us, though. Second Spell Matters card has plot. You probably don't need me to tell you how to use that. You plot it, and then you can, you know, play it later on. Or just put it on turn two to set up your engine. So, Brimstone Roundup. Um, yeah, this one lets you basically exploit a creature to draw two, lose two. And you can plot it, so wait till you have the, the 
the right turn for it. This is one that I, I this is one of the ones I plot less because I often just wait and cast it when I've got the right condition, but I could plot it. I can see on turn three, you just plot this guy. It'll happen sometimes. Servant of the Stinger wants you to commit crimes so you can demonic tutor. I have um, had oh some pretty high intense games with this card. I used to do some different stuff. It used to just be like, if it, uh, if it, yeah, I think there was a different condition. I don't remember exactly what it was that uh, let you just sack it to tutor. And man, it was brutal. My opponent always getting their best card. And we talked about this card for Constructed. Um, this one, though, a little bit harder to pull off. you got to hit them with it. So it's still trickier, but it's still not hard to play this on turn two. Commit a crime on turn three, get it through, and then tutor for your best card, right? They might have to, to trade with it because of the death touch. So yeah, be afraid of this one. Do not let them hit you. Don't, don't do it. It's too dangerous. They'll get their best card. Um... Unless you think their deck is all bad cards, then don't worry about it. Um, one problem we have sometimes with these kind of cards that can sack lands is your opponent, is your, um, uh, not your opponent, but newer players will just be like, oh, cool, activate it and sack a land, even though, like, they don't have enough resources anymore. At least with this card, instead of them accidentally sacrificing their lands, you give them treasure back, so they can still hopefully cast at least some of their spells. Um, although, hopefully, you just don't sack your lands early on. This is a late game ability, though. Great for um, churning through your lands in the late game, drawing some cards. Here's the Dust Animus that, uh, yeah, you can play it as a 2-mana two 2-3 two, flyer, which is, you know, already a decent stat line. Um, but if you plot it and then you play it on turn 5, it will come in as a 4-5 lifelink flying. Um, you know, you just need 5 more untapped lands, which is pretty easy to do um, when you don't tap any mana to cast your spell in the first place. So on turn 7, you can cast this as well. It's also a fun card to, you know, cheat into play in other ways. But, um, yeah, the big one here is plot and... I love the versatility of this, either plotting it or casting it for two. And you got kind of a big decision to make here with what you want to do, right? Do you want to do you want to cast for two or do you want to plot it in? That's your call. Oops. Here's Heartless Pillage. It's a little, little raid card here. Um, Oasis Gardener and Foil and an island. And there's one of the bloods from Big. Here's the, the, the token that was made. By the way, here's a, a secret layer ad card, but most likely to bring back banding. Do you think they're going to do it? Do you think they're going to bring back banding? You let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right. <clears throat> here's that Wingsmith again. Mind Raider, here, here's a new card. Just gives you a treasure if you have an outlaw, so it really wants you to curve turn two outlaw into turn three Mind Raider. So this is definitely for those more aggressive outlaw decks. We'll have plenty of them. This is a card I really enjoyed, the Dance of the Tumbleweeds, right? You can either pay three mana to just do your rampant growth, Three mana rampant growth with upside is kind of a standard you'll see here. But late in the game, you can also do the second mode to make a huge creature. So rampant growth for three mana, sure, that's fine. Comes into play untapped even, so you can use it right away. But also, um, yeah, just late game being like, oh, I'll pay six to make a huge creature. Pretty solid. Just don't get it repulsed. That's going to feel bad. Fake your own death, a nice reprint for this set. Make your stuff come back. Here's a little... Um, Little trick, minus o minus o trick. Great for triggering crimes, right? Because you have something minus o minus o, draw a card, just a simple little cantrip that um, triggers your crimes. It's also a second spell. So um, if you if you uh, you know if you have an outlaw, it gets even smaller. But even just as a, a fleeting distraction in this set, triggers crimes could help you hit your second spell. Whatever, nice little cheap trick. I like cards like that. Holy cow! Here's a card you can cast on your opponent's turn and keep your. Um, Cards that don't want you to cast spells on your own turn turned on. This card, nice. Holy cow. I know it's made a lot of people smile in saying the name. Um, I like that when you commit crimes, this card gets loot counters. That's a lot of fun. But yeah, it's a mana rock that lets you draw some cards. Um, this is this is a nice little card draw engine if you're going to be a longer term game. Because you can only cast a bunch of removal spells and then eventually you can draw some cards off of it, which is, uh, is kind of nice. Uh, here's a Desert Matters card. Once again, they're kind of sprinkled throughout. This one also is a card that searches you up a desert and then, um, you know, just gets bigger. So hopefully when you play this, you can make it a 2-3 pretty easily by finding that desert and putting it into your hand. But it's, you know, you can make this guy even bigger if you have enough deserts in your deck. Play it on a, uh, and turn 3 as a 3-4 if you want. Go nuts. Here's Miriam. This is the green-white uh, mount um, signpost legend. And, um, yeah, both, both pumps up your, your mounts. And it gives them Hexproof, kind of solves the problem where you uh, saddle your mount and you attack and they kill it and you wasted both your attackers. Nope. This gives, make sure your mounts have Hexproof so your opponent can't just do that. Keep in mind, though, it applies even if you um, even if you haven't mounted it this turn. So it's just true at all times on your turn, your opponent's going to have a tough time uh, killing off your stuff. 
Oh, this is a really fun one. Lilia undefeated slick shot. A lot of fun decks to be made here. I have seen uh, some people talk about this with split cards, right? You can cast a cheap split card and then play the expensive half of the split card later on, which is a lot of fun. But whenever you cast a multicolored instant or sorcery, you get to plot it as it resolves. So um, this is going to be a really fun commander to build around. I think people are going to have a blast with, with this one. Ooh, here's a card from Big that's going to make a, well, big impact. Um, this crushes a lot of decks, especially in older formats that play a bunch of small small creatures. But the flexibility of cycling it away if it's not good in the matchup, killing off all tokens, right? This blows up all tokens on the battlefield. It's not just creatures, it's all non-land permanents. So this card is going to see a lot of play, I predict. Get your pest controls. It's a, it's a great name for that card, too. Here's a Void Slime. Nice classic from Dissension all the way back here. A foil Razzle Dazzler. Now that is an appropriate foil. Lonely Arroyo. And this Human Cleric here. A little 2-1 Human Cleric. I think he goes with uh, Outlaw's Merriment. Is that right? Oh, and there's, there's the Plot Reminder token, in case you were curious. What that looks like. All right, on to the next boosty. Here we go. All right, Reach for the Sky, Consuming Ashes. Seen all these, seen most of the comms at this point. Not this Ambush Gigapede though, hiya! This reminds me of that card from uh, Aquaria, the leech, the whatever that leechy thing was called. Bonder Leech, maybe? I don't remember. But it's a, it's a big flash creature that shrinks one of their things. Um, yes, yeah, so you can either kill off their thing and trade in combat, or you know, just scare your opponent, frankly, with a huge ambushing Gigapede. I would not want a Gigapede to ambush me. Ooh, I love this kind of card. Mill three cards, get back a land. Oh, just makes your deck so much more consistent. Really nice. And if, if you don't hit, I love it, it does have this payout. We do talk about the variance on these cards sometimes, and we can't make them mill too many cards because it makes it a little too easy to just fill your graveyard. But I like the um, variance fixer of giving you a treasure in, in the instance that you miss here. Ooh, this is a really fun one with plot, right? This is deal two damage. It lets you draw a card pretty easily. So this is a, a really slick, I guess, pun not intended, but... Also, happy about a uh, really slick card. Here's the Rakish Crew. I love these lineup looks. There's a card like this in Streets of New Capenna, too. It's just the vibe feels good in the art here. Uh, but yeah, this here's a card for your Outlaw deck, certainly. A little uh, Outlaw Blood Artist that makes you, uh, makes you a mercenary on the way. Sort of like um, Bastion of Remembrance. Lava Spur Boots, of course, a take on uh, Swiftfoot Boots. A boots that gives it Ward 1, so it's a far cry from Hexproof or Shroud. But um, only costs 1 to play. And grants one, one plus one plus so. Oh. The boots were indeed made for much more than walking. Bruce Tarl is here, yes. You can finally build your Ox deck. I know you've been waiting for this. I think probably more likely this will slot into all of your Changeling decks. So I know a lot of you will have fun with this. Um, but yeah, he comes in. He exiles your cards. You make two twos. You can, be, you can cast the end of your next turn. Card advantage engine in red-white. I think this card is, uh, is going to be a pretty exciting commander to build around. And also just a pretty strong card. So, have fun with Bruce Tarl. I look forward to the true Oxen fans out there who do put, like, Pillarfield Ox in their deck, though. You're the real heroes. Savage Smash. Boom. A nice little red-green uh, crime there. Spinewoods Paladin. Ooh, a Foil Lush Oasis. That's really pretty, actually. Check that out. And then, oh, Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones Art Card. Very cool. All right. On to the next pack. All right, here's this Reckless Lackey. This is, um, I like cards that, you know, have a, do something for you later on. Right? So this is a one drop, can come in, can attack early. It is a pirate, so it counts as an outlaw, which is pretty important when you're trying to curve out in the outlaw deck. But when you're out of stuff to do with your one mana, one, two, you just cash it in for a card. So I, I, I like these kind of kind of things. Just help make sure that your cheap cards aren't dead later in the game, which is nice. This is a nice blue common. It's Jin's of Fool's Fall. Five mana, four, three flyer. Well, that's fine. But you, you can plot it, um, which just lets you uh, then play it on the next turn. Uh, for accident, Gold Rush. Good to see you. Ooh, another another one of these. We got uh, got the green black one earlier, Bloom and Marsh, but now we got Inspiring Vantage. So slowly building out my set of uh, Owls of Thunder Junction Fast Lands. Owen Path Journey. So here's a big card that's been a, well, had some big discussion around it. So it features Loot and Jason Vraska in the art. That's one thing. But it also lets you go find five lands and get one every single turn. So you're going to get one this turn guaranteed for sure, basically, unless your opponent is a jerk and blows us up at instant speed because it uh, puts it in play at the end of your turn. But then, uh, yeah, it can potentially ramp you five lands over the course of five turns and, you know, get all your non-basics that you that you got this way. So you can get, you know, a Gaia's Cradle if you are fortunate enough to have one. 
Um, but, you know, all kinds of other fun, non-basic lands. Um, yeah, we'll see how much of an impact this makes. And a lot of folks have talked about this being strong. Ooh, a cleave card. Wow. That's a mechanic you don't see every day. Fierce Retribution, back here on the bonus sheet. There's another Slick Shot Vault Buster. One of these planes, I love the, um, the mana symbol showing up in the sky here on this. And here's a treasure token, by the way. Here's the treasure you're trying to get. All right, on to the next pack. Just moseying on through. We saw most of those commons uncommons that time, so maybe we've uh, gone through most of them. Here's one we haven't seen yet, though, the Rodeo, Pyromas Rodeo Pyromancers. First of all, you got to love a rodeo. And I love that this is a card that wants you to not say, it's not my first rodeo, because when you cast a spell, you get RR right back, which helps you um, chain for second spell stuff. So whenever you trigger that, you got to say, it's not my first rodeo, okay? That's, uh, that's, that's critical. That's critical. In fact, if you've watched these videos before, you know that I like to put a secret word in about halfway through to see who's actually watching versus who's skimming to the, the end. So the secret word for this video is going to be rodeo. If you made it this far, drop in the comments down below. That way I'll know that, um, you know, I can't see how many people are actually watching the whole video versus just like skimming around to the end. So rodeo is your, uh, is your secret word there. Seen these guys already. Ooh, breaches. Gotta love this guy. I saw him in Ixalan. He's back here. He's flipping coins. Um, I could see I could see trying this in the coin flip deck. I've got some artifacts to sacrifice. I like copying spells and, and you know, dealing damage sometimes. It's a you know, it's a real win-win situation. Win the flip or lose the flip. You get the bonus. You get a bonus. Who knows what's gonna be? Ooh, surgical extraction. Nice. This is a uh, funny to see the Frexine mana in this symbol. Or in this frame, I should say. Cool open. Scale Storm Summoner making dinosaurs for you. Makes it a little 3-1 dinos. Here's a Roded Canyon. Oh, and there's an elemental token that, that common makes. Looks like a boar, a boar elemental to me. But uh, there you go. All right, on to the next booster. All right, Thunder Salvo, seeing you, seeing you. Ooh, here's a new one, Dead Eye Duelist. Just these little pingers. Helps to uh, just give you a bit of reach. Well, I guess literally and figuratively, this card has plenty of reach. What am I saying? This one, a lot less likely to catch you as surprise reach, given its name and art. But still, watch out for the surprise reach. Here's one I'm surprised we haven't seen yet, the Conduit Pylons. This is a common desert. This is sort of our uh, Shimmering Grotto upgrade. We found that the Shimmering Grottos were a little bit on the weak side, so we started giving them a bit of a bonus. This one surveils one when it comes into play. And, uh, yeah, it's also a desert that fixes your mana. Conduit Pylons. Here's a Felidar. You might know these from Zendikar, the world of Zendikar. This is a real big boy. When it attacks, it pumps up all your creatures and gains you some life, as long as it's saddled, which hopefully you, you can do. <laughs> I love the name of this one. I remember seeing this for the first time and smiling. Yes, good old Honest Rutstein, good for your black green graveyard strategy. Um, this guy, yeah, I would trust a guy named Honest Rutstein. What's not to love? Uh, what could go wrong with Honest Rutstein? I, I also laughed when I saw that Varmint was going to be a creature type we were using for the first time. I remember hearing some of those discussions. Uh, but yeah, here's your like spider spawning -y style card. Pairs well in your graveyard deck, so kill people out with Rise of Varmint. This is exactly what you want in green-black. Pitiless Carnage lets you cash in as many permanents as you want for that many cards. Maybe if you're storming off, you'll cash in everything. Um, you know, but you can also just plot and wait around for later until the right moment, sack some lands, etc. It's a cool card, but one thing I want to point out on this that I think is really cool is this is a new piece by Richard Kane Ferguson. So we haven't seen a ton by him. We've seen him mostly on like booster fun cards and in Horizon style sets or whatever, reprint sets. But here's a new piece and a new set by RKF. Great to have the legend for early magic back. So nice. Here's Hindering Light, another one of those, another Reckless Lackey, Jagged Barons. Oh, and that, uh, that art series card. All right, we are here over an hour. Plenty to talk about here in Thunder Junction, as it turns out. Oh, here's a, here's this kind of card that I've been really enjoying. So these are, we call them Campus Guides, after the one in Strixhaven. I don't know why that's one one we latched on to. But anyway, these are uh, two mana artifact creatures that are colorless at common. They go search for a basic land. Um, in this case, he finds a desert, but, you know, at least finds a basic land. Really enjoy these just for smoothing a little, little bit. Help make sure that you hit your land drops and get doing something else on top of it, right? So this one also is a mercenary, essentially. 
it's, a, it's even got the type and you can pump things at sorcery speed. So yeah, I've really enjoyed these guys and um, I, I think you'll see a lot more of these in sets. They just are so good for smoothing things out because in limited, just when you get mana, you know, mana screwed, it just it sucks. And letting you have ways like land cycling, you've seen a lot more land cycling in sets too to help prevent that. It just makes the games more fun. Let's you go back and forth a bit. It's more than, you know, there's a little bit of mana screw at least happening. We hear Sterling Supplier. Sorry, there, I took a sip of water for a second. Been talking for over an hour. Um, all right, here's the Sterling Supplier. That just um, gives a little counter to another creature. 3 4 guy. Ooh, bombs and trains and sabotage. A nice breaches quote on this one. Yeah, just three mana deal, four damage to a creature. It can also blow up an artifact, so a yeah, two for one common. It's pretty uh, pretty easy to find some artifact poking around in this format, depending on who you're playing against. So nice two for one common here. Very high, very high pick and limited. Maybe even maybe, probably not. But you know, there's some world you could imagine this as a constructed shot too, although five mana is a lot, so probably not. Probably not. See these guys. Who's here's Cram, everyone's favorite uh, partner. Well, not not my favorite, but many people's favorite partner. Um, why don't you cast two spells in a turn, showing you what blue red is trying to do with that double spell archetype? Cast two spells, he gets a bigger, and you draw a card. Good with plot. Good with all the cantrips, small stuff lying around. Here's another card that wants you to cast two spells in a turn, tapping and tapping things or or stunning things. They're already tapped. Tiny Bones joins up. Hey, here's another one of these fun guys. Same kind of structure as Rakdos is. When it comes into play, people discard cards. And then when Legends come in, um, it, you know, just dings them for a little bit. Notably, um, you can target yourself on the first one. It does have the flexibility to let you discard if you want to. So if you have a synergy with this, um, you know, let's you uh, do that. Reanimate something. Whatever you got going on. Ooh, this is a card that's been much discussed. The Insatiable Avarice. Um, very good with Shola Dread because you can target, um, you know, cast it and trigger Shola Dread three times um, on top of, you know, also having Vampiric Tutor as a mode. So, yeah, BBB, target player draws three, loses three. Very good with Shola Dread. Plus, you get the, you know, the Vampiric Tutor mode. Would not be surprised if this saw some play, especially in these blackish control decks. There's the Outlaw's Merriment I mentioned earlier when I saw that two in Human Cleric. It's got Outlaw in the name, so great to have it back. Although I do find that it's funny that only one of these is an Outlaw, but it is the one that does a crime, so something there feels right in the world. There's one Outlaw being remembered. Ooh, another, another one of these. Here's another Decisive Denial. Foil Island, gorgeous. Love that blue mana symbol hidden right there. Not, not that hidden, I guess. And then Ox. There's an Ox right there. Give that to Bruce Tarl. Bruce is ready for an Ox. Okay. Moving right along here. Take up the shield. Love uh, love this this little combat trick here. Plus one, plus one, lifelink, indestructible. Just all the words you want in the right order. Seeing these guys. <clears throat> oh, so one thing we were trying to do is, when a format tends to be pretty fast, we look for ways to help even things out a little bit, like let you regain tempo. Because magic is fun when you have comebacks. Oops. Magic is fun when you have comebacks. You want to be able to like have comebacks happen in games. You don't want it to always be, be one-sided, so how do you create those comebacks? Well, having a bounce, a Mana War, uh, or Aether Adept, depending on how old you are, um, or probably an even newer one. I don't know what, what's a newer one. Someone in the comments can tell me. Um, that only hits tapped things lets you create those comeback moments, right? So if you're on the aggressive, this card is not that good. It doesn't help you just Mana War their creature and tempo them out. But if they're attacking you, you can bounce their thing and try and you know stabilize, get back in the game with your 4-4. Four, four. So these, these kind of effects... Targeting, uh, having cost reductions for targeting uh, attacking creatures or uh, bouncing tapped creatures is a nice little subtle game design way of, of doing just that. Oh, well, here's a nice one. You can plot this guy and deal two damage when you plot him. This is one I, I pretty seldom cast as a three mana three three with reach. I love plotting this to deal the two damage and then get the three three later. So another fun way you can use plot. Plot triggers. Here's, here's another one of the blue-white signposts. Here's the other one, the non-legend one. This gives you two twos when you haven't cast spells from your hand. Same deal as the, as the last one. You want to just, uh, you know, find, set up your time, plot some cards. And keep in mind, you can still cast cards that, from Exile that are plotted and that uh, will let you still make your two twos. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun drafting that deck. It's very, very unique. <laughs> a boom box that blows up one of each of three different things. Three for one, it's a little expensive to activate. You're not going to play this all the time, but a good solution to some problems if your opponent's got them. 
a desert perhaps is an issue. Okay, here's one that was very controversial. Why? It's a two mana 2-2 two -two in blue. We don't do a lot of those. That is something new. Two mana 2-2 two -two in blue with upside is kind of a forbidden stat line. Um, but here it is, Archmage is new, Blue's finally doing it. You're not, it's not going to get it very often, you're not going to see it at common really. But uh, you know the game has moved on a lot, we can give Blue two mana 2-2s two in the right instances. So here's one, it, um, yeah, it, uh, it gets flashback zero if it's saddled, so sort of like a riff on Snapcaster Mage. But the two mana 2-2 two -two is the thing that, as a game designer, I could potentially interested in. Clear shot is here, and a little crime that makes uh, the bites your opponent's creature. Foil, Unscrupulous Contractor, Mountain. Oh, here's this 3-3 uh, three, three Angel token. Very cool looking. All right. I think we still have, like, I don't know, half the box left to go. So many packs. They're going to go faster now, probably, because we've seen a lot of these cards. If you are uh, watching this video, you can look down at the bottom and see how much longer is left and see if I'm just very wrong about that. Sometimes I'm so off about how long these things will take. Here's Mirage Mesa. Uh, just another easy desert. Comes into play. We've made a few cards like this, but it's also a desert. Right, we just took some lands that we know work and put the desert type on them in this set. So, um, right, that just lets your desert synergies work while still fixing your mana and all that good stuff. Here's that Stitcher again. Here is a Hollow Marauder, plays right into the graveyard strategy. Um, and uh, yeah, you get to make your opponents discard cards. One fun thing that we did in this set is normally we just write each opponent discards a card, right? That's how you would normally want to write this card. But in this set, you specifically want to target because of crimes. So there's a handful of cards that say things like any number of target opponents or whatever, um, so that, this, that, that the crimes get triggered off it. So Hollow Marauder can trigger all of your opponents, or sorry, rather target all of your opponents and hit all of them, um, unless you draw some cards. This card actually, is, surprisingly uh, reasonable in Commander if you're playing some Black Green Graveyard deck. If you cost this thing for one or two mana or whatever, you make th all three of your opponents discard a card, and if they don't discard a big one, you draw three cards. So yeah, two mana, four, two flyer, draw three cards on your end, uh, they all discard a card. Keep an eye on this one, keep an eye on this one. It's, it's a sleeper. Betrayal at the Vault. Yes, you get to have one creature deal damage with its power to two creatures. Little two for one, instant speed. Nice little, uh, nice little, Card there for six mana. Sheriff of Safe Passage. Just wants you to go wide. Once again, put on turn two. Hold up, hold up their partner until you have um, until you have enough uh, creatures in play. Ooh, there's a nice one. Jace is back here in this set. You see Jace transforming from Ashiok, which spoilers, I guess, if you haven't been following the story. You can't cast him. He does the Sarah Avenger thing where you can't cast him on the first few turns. But it is a two mana Planeswalker. Really exciting stuff. Um, one thing I think is fun about this card is you can't cast it during your first, second, or third turns of the game. But if you, if you find a clever way to cast it on your opponent's first, second, or third turn, you can do it. So get clever. Find a way to make that happen. I remember Aether Viling in Sarah Avengers on turn two back in the day, or I guess turn three. So there, there are some funny ways to do that. But yeah, you know, Videl can ori it up. Leyland of Anticipation works with this, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, this is a very exciting card. It lets you loot, lets you um, plot cards from your hand to cast later on. All building up to big ultimate, so very curious to see what this does. Two mana Planeswalkers, even when they have a restriction when you can play them, are still very exciting. So yeah, Jace Reawaken, cool open there. Fling, a classic. Fling is back. It's good to know that some things in Magic are, are consistent. There's another foil Metamorphic Blast. This foil right here, or not foil, this forest right here. And then, ooh, a signed art card for a Contagion Engine. Wow. All right, on to the next pack. All right, seen probably all these commons. Let's see if there's anything we haven't seen there. Nope, Honest Rut, seen, seen you. The Bounty Felidar, seen you. Boombox, seen you. Annie joins up, here's Annie Flash's join up. This this card does the uh, triggered ability doubling thing for your legendary creatures, right? The ones in the same construction, ability that has an ETB, caring about your legendary creatures, that's how these guys work. And uh, yeah, you know, we've done a lot of this doubling trigger thing recently. Players really enjoy it. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback that people love these cards. You've seen so many, whatever, Panarmonicon decks and Yarok decks. I think we've probably pushed this button a little too often. You should pull back a little bit, but there's still a lot of fun ones to make. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying to make them, but maybe try and be a little more, a little more metered about it. That said, this is a fun one just for legends. So, you know, there's Wily Duke. This is a card, uh, I love it when a card is a bit of a puzzle, right? So it's a Vigilance card, 
that wants to become tapped. So how do you do that? Well, mounts, of course. There are other ways you can do it, but uh, mounts are a, a, a big way. You can make it happen here. Indomitable Creativity, this, um, this reprint is back. Play this one, but cheat some stuff into play, you know? Always a good time. People doing this in older formats. Garolf the Flesh, right? Ooh, foil mythic rare. That's that's nice. Yeah, I've I, I remember drafting and getting smashed by this card. It uh, the zombies add up fast. So whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than your first spell, so your second, third, fourth, etc., all trigger this. So it's easy to set up with plot, easy to set up with cantrips. You make a two-two zombie. So you make tons of zombies, and then you get to you know the zombies all get bigger for every other zombie that came in. So yeah, you basically want to storm combo people out with this. And I have gotten stormed out in Limited, so, um... Oh, and there's the map from Big. Fun. It's cool to, ha cool to have the big tokens in here. You see, just, you know, every now and then you're like, Oh, what's this blood doing here? What's this map doing here? That's a, that's a bit, a bit of an extra, like, mystery of, Ooh, I wonder what card that connects to, you know? Here's this Gila Corsair. Love a little impulse. I love, you know, Saddle is, is such a fun little, like, question of, Okay, is it good to not attack with my other creature to get the bonus out of this? I know for me, I love drawing cards too much. I'm going to saddle this thing up all the time. It all, even bottles till your next turn, so if you can't play it this turn, don't sweat it. You can wait and play it next turn. Congregation Griff, here is a, a mount. So if for your green-white deck, right, that cares about mounts, so. Um, this is a nice one to have. Get some flying in there. Gets its bits of big life linker. So if you saddle it up, or a small life linker if you don't. Here's this Intrepid Stable Master. So this is a nice one. It's a mana elf that gives you two mana for mounts and vehicles. So once again, it goes in that green-white mount stack and can turbo into some big guys quickly. Watch out for the reach, though. Secret reach card on, on this one. Maze, Mage, Bane, Lizard. Um, tells your opponent not to cast too many spells. You know, it's good to have counteracting stuff in the format when your opponent is, you know, plotting and, and cast two spells in a turn away or whatever. So this just says hold up a little bit. It's a, nice, it's a nice sideboard card, really. It's a good anti-storm card, if that's your vibe. Ooh, here's a nice one. This, um, yeah, this reminds me of, I don't know, like a Siege Gang Commandery or whatever style card. You put this in, it gives all your other outlaws haste, um, and it makes two mercenaries that have haste right away. So it, you know, can attack as a 4-4, four, four, or if you have, you know, um, other things you want to pump up, you can pump, pump there. Um, yeah, this is a nice, nice card for the Outlaws here. I have lost this card in Limited too. Oh, Memories. Endless Detour. Love the art. The art on these Prosperity postcards is so cool. Ooh, another round. This is, this is a fun one. You get to basically blink a creature or X creatures X times. So you get to blink as many creatures as you want X times. So for five mana, you can blink all your creatures one time, sure. Um, or sorry, for three mana, you get to blink all your creatures one time. For five mana, you can blink them all twice. Seven mana, blink them all three times, and so on. So uh, get those ETB effects ready. Yeah, I remember this one went through a lot of iteration to try and get the numbers right and to you know get all the discussions around this card right, but it's really fun. I love a good ETB effect. You a forest and a treasure. Fun to just double those up. I love we know you have cards like that. It's like, wow, we've been making magic cards for a long time. We haven't made this, this card that lets you flicker things a bunch of times repeatedly like that. Here's Trained Rx, I haven't seen this one yet. Two mana, three one, first strike while saddled. Just a, just a nice little cheap card for your mountain deck as you're building it out. Um, <clears throat> this card, I, lo I love cards that tutor things into your graveyard because it just opens your mind to the possibilities of what you could do with it. Of course it comes with itself. You can tutor for a creature, put it into your graveyard and bring it right back. This does not target, so make it happen right away. But there's something fun about just, just the idea of casting this buried alive in a creature. It's probably because I love buried alive is the reason. And then reanimating it somehow. So yeah, reanimate your bomb too. You know, whatever whatever you want to do with this lively dirge. Plus you get keys in the artwork. Here's a, uh, your uncommon for the black green deck on top of the honest Rutstein, who we all trust very much. Um, gets gets two, one thing back to the battlefield, one thing back to your hand for five mana. Here's the card that actually combos. These go right together, right? Lively Dirge plus Badlands Revival. Tutor a card into your graveyard and then bring it back. Your opponent will die to your huge bomb. What's not to love? Double strike while you committed a crime. Yeah, you gotta love that. Fencing Ace, watch out. This can hit your opponent for four right away. Or bigger if, if you're, you're pumping it up. Oh, we got Vraska joining up. We almost got the full game. We got Tiny Bones, we got Annie Flash, we got Rakdos. Here's Vraska. 
puts a death touch counter, just a little returning of the counter mechanic. Lead designer Dave Humphreys pioneered that in Aquaria, so fun to have that back here. And then, yeah, it lets you draw cards when you hit people with your, le with your legends. Same kind of model as, as previously. Uh, Journey to Nowhere, cool, uh, cool reprint crime here. Foil Mirage Mesa, Lush Oasis. Ooh, there's that clue. I love the hand sticking out there with the envelope. All right, on to the next pack. I don't know, I'm eyeballing it. There's probably maybe around 10 boosters left. I don't know the actual number, but let's say 10. Plus or minus a couple. Okay. Seeing all these boys. Oh, except for this Blood Hustler. This guy gets, gets bigger as you commit crimes. So once again, card for your crime deck. And it's self-enabling, right? You can pay four mana to trigger it. Notably, it triggers only once each turn, but you can trigger on your turn and their turn. So you can do this on your turn and do it on their turn if you have enough mana. So let's you just give you a mana sync late. We're always looking for ways to put mana sinks into sets, right? Like if the game goes long, what can you do with your mana? And so um, it's little stuff like this goes a long way. Plus this also triggers crimes for all your other cards. So it just make sure you have a consistent crime source in play, which um, is important if you're trying to, you know, steal things. Okay, shoot the sheriff. This card is super fun um, because I, I, well, I, you know, super fun for you if you're casting it, not so fun for your opponent. I love a good conditional removal spell, you know, go for the throat or victim of night, that kind of stuff. Here's the next in line. It kills a non-outlaw. Two things are notable about this, or I guess really one thing that is two things. I love that in the reminder text it says everyone else is fair game. That's super fun. It just makes me smile. I love that little little fun flavor nod there. Um, and the thing I love about it is not only is it just a fun little flavor nod, but it actually has a purpose of communication, right? So when you read this, it says assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are outlaws. Now, if you don't know what an outlaw is, if you're just seeing this card out of context, you might be wondering, well, are there other kinds of outlaws? Like, is there anything else I should know about? And this other text clears up, no, no, no. There, those are the only types you have to have to worry about, right? It's, it's, it, which is kind of nice. Um, so it's mostly fun text, but it has a little bit of function there. Good job, Matt Tayback, getting that in there. We all love Matt. Malcolm, here's a, yeah, go along with, you know, Breaches, you've seen before. Here's Malcolm. Gotta love those Ixalan pirates showing up here. Second spell card. Makes you clues if you uh, cast your second spell on a turn. Another skewer of the critics. Here's a foil spring splasher. Waiting for fall splasher and summer splasher and winter splasher. Gotta make a full cycle of those guys. Who's with me? Who's with me? There are some future uh, <laughs> unknown event cards I can make. Writing those down right now. All right, getting through these commons here. Seeing you. I love the cactus folk. They make me smile so wide in this set. It's just cool to have these cactus people rolling around. Anyway, here's a power four. Matters cactus card um, for the red green deck. Also a mercenary, so I don't want a, a cactus being on my opponent's side. That's always always a little scary, you know. Here's a tomb trawler. Ooh, awesome! Inspiring vantages. We're three out of three out of five. Maybe we can get to five out of five. We'll see. See if we get there. Okay, now here is a reprint. It's a, this is a special guest. So you get the borderless treatment. There's a handful of these in the set. Um, I love that we reprinted Desert. This is such a wacky card from the early days of Magic. It's the first Desert we ever made from Arabian Nights. And uh, yeah, we, we reprinted this in Time Spiral on the bonus sheet where it actually saw a decent amount of play killing off creatures in like mono blue decks, which is wacky. Um, and it's a it's a common, so it's even pop or legal if you want. And yeah, it's got this cool, um, cool special guest treatment here. It's not standard legal. We decided that it was pretty annoying and you know, honestly enables decks that we're not the biggest fans of. It just punishes attackers. So uh, not standard legal as a special guest, but it's a cool throwback reprint and a fun open. Cool to see the borderless card show up here. So nice to get that desert. Very cool. Clear shot. Get out of here. Prickly pear. And uh, there's a slick sequence right there for you. I love the art on slick sequence. Seeing it on this art card especially. Oh, it's such a great piece. The motion they capture in this piece, it's really good. I remember using that in a lot of presentations internally. Not me. I didn't use it in presentations. I just saw presentations with it in it. Well, we, common, we haven't seen it. Here it is. A vermicious varmint, a creature dash varmint. It's not just for tokens. A nice little 2 2 vidge that can also blow up the artifact or enchantment. Cute way to deal with all those oblivion rings or similar. Another common we haven't seen yet the Nazumi Link Breaker. Two, a 1 mana 1 1 that when it dies turns into a mercenary. Your classic kind of like Doom Traveler style card. Good for if you're sacking stuff. Seize the Secrets. Only seen you in foil so far. So, nice to have that here. Reckless Lackey. You've seen the rest of these guys, though. Here's, here's one. It's a, it's a slow blink along with um, 
killing off a creature. So it's kind of a unique condition here, and you can combine these two things, of course, to get something out of the way and then blow up a creature um, if uh, you get rid of the things that have a greater power than it. So just a little bit of flexibility. Love that these free cards are so flexible. Oh, this one I've had so much fun with playing limited. I think it even has potential otherwise, right? You look at your top three, and you get to, to plot one of them and draw the other two. So that means even if Emrakul's in your top three cards, you can just cast it for free the next turn. I really anticipate some folks trying to build some pretty goofy combo decks with this, where you tutor a card to the top, perhaps even with the Vampire Tutor Avarice card, and then plot something ridiculous. I look forward to seeing what people do with it. Sounds, sounds fun. This card can make treasure, stash some treasure. Weird kind of mana ramp, mana fixing, color fixing. Also just two mana 2-2 two, two to boot. And it's an outlaw, so it gets the job done, this treasure dredger. Gotta watch out for the creature types here. All kinds of cool ones. Oh, it's Fibblethip! There he is! This is fun. Yeah, so you can just plot your top card, um, which is, is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, this is a, this is a silly one. Let's you plot cards and kind of churn through, through your deck. Um, I remember playing this in Limited and just getting tons of value with it, which is, was fun. Probably a fun commander to build around, too. And it kind of an infinite card advantage engine and constructed the ward, too, helps keep it in play. So that's something nice. Fierce Retribution, Drover Grizzly, Soured Springs. And that's the L for that pack. On to the next booster here. All right, going through the comments. Seen all these guys. Here's this Prosperity Tycoon. Good for your white black deck wants to sacrifice some tokens, sacrifice some stuff, and get you know, get this four two that uh, is tough to kill off. Also, make some mercenary when it comes in, so you can go wide with it. Always a nice little thing. Um, <laughs> this is the card that I just say people will build some weird sideways decks with. It, you know, if, if your draft goes well and you get like three of these, or I don't know what goes well, but you draft some wacky deck, you get like three of these. You curve this into another one of these. You start committing crimes. You mill your opponent out. It's gonna happen. I'm sorry, Voxy. You're gonna get milled out by this Ruined Crab Impersonator. It's a Homerid, so don't do that every day either. Even the Homerids have made it in here. The Thunder Junction. It's pretty funny. This town ain't big enough. What a great name. Gotta have a card called this in the set. You kidding me? And yeah, you get to, to bounce either two of their things for five mana, or you just basically play Runaway Together, right? It costs three less if you target your own thing. So. Good flexibility, it gets, it's a runaway together that gets played in a little more often than that card does. Ooh, Concealed Courtyard, we got the white black one, we're just one away. What's the one that we're missing? The blue red one, Spire Bluff Canal, I think. All right, let's see if we can get the last one in this box. Humiliates, all right, got one of those. Stop Cold and Foil, a Swamp, and this Frontier Seeker. All right, will I get, I guess now I'm really rooting for it. I'm really rooting to get the blue red one. Spire Bluff Canal, here we go. Hope I didn't already open it and forgot about it. That'd be embarrassing. I don't think I did, though. All right. Here's another one of these. Oh, we saw you already. Skills from Summoner. This Entertainer that pumps up stuff that, that entered this turn. Um, good on its own. All right, you can just play this card and pay one mana to add counters to things that you play. Basically, everything has kicker one. Kind of put a counter on it. But also good with plot, once again. You can plot stuff off to the side, play it, and then uh, do this. Use all the mana free. Affinity for Outlaw. So Affinity is another mechanic. We've decided is just okay to use now, right? Instead of writing... The spell costs one less without the mechanic. Let's just write the mechanic. Players can learn it. Um, and so Affinity for Outlaws is a weird little one-off you'll find here on this card. Ooh, here's one that is really fun. So it is a time twister, right? So you get to shuffle your hand back in and draw seven. Um, but normally the problem with, with time twister, these kind of cards, is your opponent gets first use out of the cards because your mana's not untapped. But with this one, you can plot it, cast it next turn, and you get first crack the cards, which is nice. One other small thing I'll call out is the May. What we found is in Commander, these Time Twister effects were pretty annoying, both at um, some players didn't want to lose their hands, but also people play like with, you know, whatever, force draw, you take a damage kind of card. And um, to just not power those cards up, Hull Breacher, I guess, is one that we had to ban as an example of this, to not power those cards up, um, now you, you may get to do it, right? So if your opponent is playing a deck that's full of mean things when you draw cards, you don't have to do it. If your hand is sweet, you don't have to do it. But well, you can if you want to. It's a nice little quality of life thing. Ooh, here's another card from Big. It's got Hideaway. So not that many Hideaway cards out there. Hideaway 5, using the new template we saw in uh, Streets of New Capenna. And then, um, yeah, it gives counters to your creatures. And if things go just right, lets you play the card for free. Pretty easy, actually, to get this um, 
to get this trigger. You can build around this. So if you can stack top of your deck right, get something under this, you're playing your big thing for cheap. Tyrant Scorn, cool little uh, little card there on the bonus sheet. Foil Ambush Gigapede, scary, gotta skip past that. Here's what those Varmint tokens look like. You don't wanna have to deal with those. All right, I think one, two, three, maybe five packs left. I think that's what we got. Five packs, or six including this one. All right, Let's see if we can find that blue red spiral bluff canal. All right, take for a ride. Oh, this one is brutal. Um, so right, so this is active treason, which is another effect we've mostly moved to uncommon now. The reason is is they were just so strong when you comboed them with sacrifice effects, um, and they weren't that 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 fun when you were doing that a ton, as we saw in Adventures in the Forgotten Realm. So now these are more uncommon with upside because the common ones basically didn't get played unless they were being played in frustrated ways. Now we can give them cool upsides, and what a heck of an upside this is. This um, lets you basically play it as Ray of Command if you committed a crime this turn. So yes, you have to you commit a crime on their turn, which it can be tricky to do, but when you pull it off, it's brutal, right? Th they attack you with their creatures, you steal their creature and block with their creature and then maybe trade them off. Woof. Yeah, this card, I, I crushed people with it. I got crushed by it. Pick this card if you can a way to commit crimes on their turns. It's good. Ooh, make X Mercenaries. This is a nice gold uncommon too. Create X tokens is... You know, lets you build up your army, and they are all these mercenaries that uh, can pump your stuff up. So, pretty solid red-white card for your mercenary deck. Demonic Ruckus. This is a nice one to plot on the first turn, so it just doesn't cost you any mana to do later, which is cool. One thing to call out that is uh, not necessarily obvious is you can, or as do target, so you can always play this on your opponent's card, opponent's um, permanent, to trigger your um, crimes if you need to, so... If in a pinch, you can do that, especially if the card's gonna die anyway, if you're gonna cast a removal spell on it or something um, on a future turn. Um, ideally, of course, you cast it on your own stuff, but just a good little thing to know there. Ooh, Laughing Jasper Flint makes everything mercenaries. So you can finally, after all these years, to have some mercenary typo mattering. Um, it doesn't impact your uh, your library, unfortunately, so you can't tutor, tutor them up, which would be really sick if you could, but alas, I guess that part of the mercenaries will have to wait till another day. It wasn't very strong anyway. Uh, but yeah, here's an Outlaw Matters card for Red Black. Oh, Memory Vessel. This is like a new memory jar. Basically, it, it's memory jar, but it ensures your opponent will get a crack at it. Um, this card scares me. So, uh, yeah, you can do some pretty wild, busted things with this card. It is red, so, you know, you have to be playing red to play it, as opposed to Memory Jar. Um, but, yeah, this is a heck of a, heck of a card. Memory Jar was instantly banned. Emergency banned, you know, the emergency ban has happened because of it for a reason, so. This is a really exciting one to play with. I'm glad we were giving players some wild tools like this. I've been assured that, it, that um, you know, a lot of things were tried with this card. And uh, we'll see what happens, see what y'all can do with it. It's a pretty wacky card. Ooh, Pariah. Once again, an old school reprint. Um, and uh, yeah, back here on this on this sheet. Foil Crown, a mountain, and a zombie rogue. I know, the Memory Jar card is just so exciting to me. It's like, I remember seeing Memory Jar for the first time, hearing about it, having my mind blown. And I think that now it's back. I, I that, There's a reason we do cards like that, right? And I think it was wise to try something like that out, because it just gets people so excited and their, and their minds percolating, even if it's not actually that cracked these days. So we'll see, we'll see how it does. I know I'm curious for some wacky stuff to happen. Okay, here's a bunch of cards we've seen already, including Vile Smasher, seen this Outcaster. Map the Frontier, this is just four mana explosive veggies, but also can get deserts. So you can go find like your Bounce Land Desert, for example, um, you know, some of the pinging deserts, you can deal two with this, bam, bam, trigger your crimes if you want to. So that's kind of nice, commit two crimes. There's Garalf again, this card is yeah, really brutal to play against. Oh, nice, one of my faves, Cruel Ultimatum. I mentioned this earlier. Definitely a crime. A great reason to try and play Grixis. I'll get in the mana, your mana draw right and limited is hard. But if you cast this, it's tough for your opponent to win. It's just so savage. Draw three, they discard three, lose five. It's, it's so much value. One of my favorite cards, Cruel Ultimatum, sweet. There's the Hollow Marauder, Hollow there. Soured Springs. And Bruce Tarl on an art card. All right, I think this is this is the fourth pack from the from the end. So we're getting close, clocking at nearly two hours. Thanks for sticking with me all this way. Ooh, Canyon Crab, a little little crabby. So this, here's another one. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you get to loot. So um, yeah, just you know you can take the turn off. You can loot if you want to, and it does have this activated ability. So if you want to take the turn off, 
you can hit him for four or something instead, you know? Also, this deck just needs defensive cards because uh, you don't want to get run over, so Canyon Crab is nice in that respect. Here's Jolene. Here's this uh, ranch <clears throat> that lets you cast your mounts. Helps you find your mounts a little bit. Um, the last ability is a lot of words to, you know, look at your top card and put a mount into your hand, but the secret part of it is it also basically lets you scry one, right? Because if you don't want it, if, if you don't if you don't take the mount, you can put it on the bottom. So you can also read this as three tap scry one. If it's a mount, you get to draw it, which is which is pretty darn nice. Um, untap desert, fixes your mana for mounts, and uh, lets you scry, and sometimes even draw a card if you do it right. So nice one for your green-white mount deck. Untap switch creature gives them a double strike. Nice little combat trick here. Easily just blow up someone's uh, attack with this, crush them. And it's got the flavor text, release the cows. So really what's not to love there. Ooh, one last job. This is a fun little reanimation uh, card. You can reanimate a lot of stuff with this. So, um, yeah, this is a, you, you pay five to get back a creature. Okay, that's not the best, but pay six, get back a creature and an aura attached to it. Ooh, okay, that's getting exciting. And if you get all three modes, that's a you know good old three for one. So, yeah, cool, uh, cool card here. A little reanimation in white. Thornado, nice. Got a little bit of cycle in there. Outlaw's Fury, Festering Gulch. There's that elemental token again. All right, we're on the last three packs. Will we open a Spire Bluff Canal and complete all five of my fast lands? Let's see what we got. All right, seen these guys. Seen all of you, seen all of you, even seen you. Ooh, fun! I was hoping we'd open up one of these. So this is a wanted poster card. So the, the gang all has one of these. These are made, of course, to look like wanted posters. So they look a little different than normal cards. The wanted at the top, their mana cost on the side. These are just really fun. So it's our second Rakdos of the box. We've seen the card already. But um, yeah, this wanted poster treat treatment is only on a handful of cards, but is a really, really fun one. Feels like you can just hang this up on your wall if you want to. That's cool. Glad we opened up one of those. Crime, Terminal Agony, Trick Shot, this land. Ooh, it's a meteorite token. There's a legend that makes these. All right. Two packs remaining. Let's see what we find. Let's see what we find in these last couple packs. We got some commons we've seen before. Here's a Scorching Shot. Two mana deal five. It's like, uh, it's like Roast, but with an extra red pip and you don't have to, you can hit flyers if you want, so. Boom, there you go. Um, a card you'll want to plot to try and get in when uh, something died. This one I really enjoy the tension of a little bit because your opponent knows it's plotted. So it's your opponent's trying to like dance around it a little bit. So it makes a fun little mini game. I like it when cards create a little mini game. So this is a fun one to have there. Trash the Town, here's um, <clears throat> another one that you can kind of gives you a bunch of choices on what you want to do, right? You can either just pay two and draw two cards if you have an unblocked creature. That's kind of nice, that's good on its own. You can also pump your creature up, so a lot of options here. I love paying about four mana, giving two counters and the draw card mode on an unblocked creature, that's nice, but a lot of flexibility here on this free card. Here's one of the vehicles. Like I said, there's a few in the set, this locomotive. This is kind of a wacky one in the templating, and I'll explain why it's templated this way. So one thing that, that we found, one thing, we thing that's weird about crew as opposed to saddle is you can crew at instant speed. So the right thing to do with this card was to attack with it and then in res it was to crew it once and then attack with it and in response to its trigger, tap your other creatures to crew it because you knew it was a, a safe and for sure thing. That play pattern was really weird. That incentive was really strange. The holding the priority in response to the ability to tap your creatures. Uh, but it was the right thing to do just so you could you know, make sure your opponent couldn't kill it in the beginning of combat and not, so you couldn't attack. So we put this strange activate only once each turn line on it. So you have to commit all your creatures at one time. You need to, um, if you want to crew it four times, you got to tap four creatures all at once instead of crewing it with your smallest one, attacking, and with the trigger on the stack, crewing it three more times. So that's what's going on with this locomotive. It's a weird card, but uh, that's why. Ooh, here's a card. I know a lot of folks are excited about the Slick Shot Show Off. You can, uh, Play this thing and attack with it right away, but uh, the, the fun thing is to set up with a big turn with this, so where you plot it and then you cast a bunch of non-creature spells to deal a ton of damage, so look forward to seeing this one in play. We've got Back for More, Rar. This card is pretty savage in your graveyard decks. And a Foil Steer Clear with the Bristling Backwards. All right, last pack. Looking for some spice out of the last booster. Will I get the Fire Bluff Canal? Will I get another sick rare? Let's see what happens. All right, all these commons. We've seen these. 
Neutralize the guards, just a little shrink your stuff, surveil, cool. Longhorn sharpshooter. Oh, there's the Roadrunner. We finally got one at the end. Of course, Roadrunner running fast in the bottom of the box. Um, yeah, as you can imagine, this pairs with the Coyote. Even calls it out with the protection from Coyotes. All right, rare. Ooh, Raxus wins up. We got another one of those. And Pestifestation. This card is pretty brutal. Um, kill off one of those Oblivion Rings or what have you. An Outlaw Medic. All right, well, four out of five of those fast lands, not too bad. With your three golem from Big. And that's everything. We got a Foil Oko. We got a bunch of fast lands, a bunch of cool new rares, a Wanted Poster Rakdos. And that is a full box of Outlaws with Thunder Destruction Play Boosters. I hope you enjoyed watching and you're excited about the set. If you have any comments, let me know down below and I'll be sure to read through all of them. Have fun, everyone. And, uh, you know, until next time, remember to, to go out into the frontiers of Magic the Gathering and explore them. And remember, you got this.